Hey, I, maybe you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Even though you're unmuted, I can't hear you. Okay, we're, we're working on it. Hang on. Uh, it's working now. Okay. Um, are you just raising your hand to let us know that, or are you raising your hand to do a public forum? And if you are having a public forum in regard to any of the agendized items, i.e. irrigation season, and we'd like you to wait until that time. Uh, no, I'm not having any questions. It was just about the mute issue. Okay, thank you. And at this time, I'd like to start with a present audience. And uh, please stand up and announce your name. And okay, thank you for giving me a, a, a cue. Okay. <laughs> okay, like I said to some of the uh, folks, uh, you guys, uh, no, my hearing is impaired, so I'm just going to ask for my consideration. And I'll be reading it because uh, I'm not um, having attended a Toastmasters meeting for years or so. <laughs> My name is Dave Jordan. I've been a uh, a loyal customer of the water uh, GDPUD for 45 years. Lived here for 50 years. I lived down at the southwest corner. A black oak mine in 193, make the turn up there on the hill with the trees. And I enjoy that property immensely. And I've been blessed with uh, irrigation at the top of the hill. It gives me gravity feed, and I'm just like loving it. And so <clears throat> I'm here to address the uh, request for a backflow preventer. And uh, <clears throat> The January 29th letter from the water company to uh, Jordan Hay and Livestock states, I'm not going to read it all, but under these regulations from the state, the district has a primary responsibility of protecting the public potable water from backflow <clears throat> and cross connection. So, <clears throat> like I said, I've been an irrigation customer for 45 years and a, and a domestic water. You know, I don't. Um, like uh, paying what I got to pay for water, but it's the best in the world, and I'm willing to pay for it. And I do. Sometimes it's tough. I once again am requesting your consideration in regarding the installation of the back backflow preventer on the GDPD equipment. I'm thankful to have worked as a union carpenter for 30 years. And I'm also thankful for Social Security, America, the Georgetown Divide, which is the finest place on earth. And um, it's no wonder everyone in the world wants to come here, and they are. We're all aware of the rising cost of living, and neither Carpenter Pension nor Social Security have provided increases even close to the skyrocket rocketing expense that we're all used to. I mean, we don't want to be used to it, but the simple everyday living, grocery, gas, fire insurance, power, and water, you know, can pretty much tax your resources as, as mine. <clears throat> I'm not on the dole. I work hard. I got a pension, Social Security. The good Lord has taught me how to be a good steward of that. And, uh, but um, I installed both my irrigation and my domestic water system. And I can demonstrate at any time there is no no chance of cross contamination. I would invite a test or an inspection at any time. I don't know if those, those things probably don't comply with what the state wants. I'm also aware of just common um, things like one way valves, you know, 40, 50, 60, 100 bucks, maybe. Backflow preventers, 1500 bucks. Uh, once again, I can't even pretend to think that I can afford to put that in on the water company's equipment. No more than I can afford to upgrade PG&E's equipment so they can have their profits. Furthermore, my irrigation water provides me fire protection. As I keep my trees watered and my pastures green, I have a 1,200-gallon water storage tank and a pump for fighting fire. So I ask again that you would not deny my irrigation water. I would hope that the water company could seek grants 
to help solve these issues. And um, in closing, I want to thank you for your time. And if you'd like this in um, right, written form, I'd be happy to uh, present that. I'm going to give you my business card, and we can discuss this. And we, if you to make any, uh, they would have to agendize this to make any kind of consideration. But we do need to talk through some legal issues to make sure that um, we're complying with the state regulations. So they're not our regulations, they're the state. But I, I let me, uh, Adam's got my card right there. That's got my cell phone number on it. Give me a call um, anytime tomorrow, next week, whenever you have convenience, and I will come out and meet with you and we'll go over and look at what, the, what everything looks like. Okay, Nicholas, I think I got most of that. What you're offering me is your time yep. to sit and uh, talk this out. And Absolutely. Work it out. Absolutely. I certainly appreciate that. And I've been around for a long time. <laughs> Just want you all to know that I'm a supporter of the water company. And we appreciate that. Mark. Hank White, Steve were good friends of mine, still are. And uh, coach baseball was uh, with Hank White. So, uh, yeah. All right. And I appreciate what you guys do. Meetings are necessary, but uh, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Okay. You. Nice to meet you. I'm going on around here because I really do think it was bad. We'll we'll bend, bend over backwards. backwards. We'll bend over backwards. Thanks, Dave. To uh, thank y'all. Looks like uh, yeah. Mr. President, we have one raised hand on the land of history. All right. I'm not going to hang out because I can't hear what you guys do. I'll be fine, Dave. I don't blame you. Sometimes next week it's going to come down to my place. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll bring my house manager with we'll I see Cherie yeah. with her hand raise. You've got the floor. Go ahead, Cherie. Um, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, because I can't hear you guys very well. The microphone's down and mine's all the way up. On March 8th, I requested five audio meeting recordings that were not on the district's website. On March 14th, I received the following reply from the district. Please note that going forward, the district is not obligated to and no longer intends to provide records in a form other than which the records are maintained as statutory required within the Public Records Act. A follow-up response to your inquiry will be transmitted on or before March 28, 2024, at which time responsive records will be made to you. In the meantime, district meeting recordings are available on the district YouTube channel for your review. Then on March 28th, I receive a notice to uh, response to my PRA has now been extended to April 19th. That's 42 days for five files. Government Code 7922.570B1 holds that an agency shall make the information available in any electronic format in which it holds the information. So having a recording on an audio recorder doesn't count as an electronic format. Does the district want YouTube to be in charge of the district's official recordings? What if someone complains to YouTube and YouTube decides to delete these recordings? Thank you. Thank you, Cherie, for your public comment. I don't see any other hands raised in the public and over the web. So at this time, I'm going to close the public comment section, and, and there will be no more public comment for this at this time. Uh, now we're going to go to consent calendar. And are there any board members that like to pull any of those items, Mr. Stovall? Yes, I'd like to pull both item uh, 4C and 4E for further discussion. And I had a question on E, so that works. That's fine. So you get any other directly? Yes, sir. No, that's it. Okay. C and E. Okay. <clears throat> this time, can I get a, a motion to approve A, B, D, and F? So moved. Second. Okay. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 My motion passes to approve consent calendar items A, B, D, F. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stovall, would you like to uh, 
Yeah, ask it, your question for Steve. Yeah, in referring to um, the investment policy, if we move to page six, page seven at the bottom, under uh, number 12, safekeeping and custody, it says, um, securities will be held by a third party custodian designated by the treasurer and evidence of safekeeping receipts. Um, in my opinion, that should read the board of directors as opposed to treasurer. Also, if you look on the next page uh, under number 13, diversification, it states to, to promote diversification, no more than 5% of the portfolio may be invested in securities of any one issue, issuer regardless of the type, including U.S. Treasuries. I believe that we have more than 5% of U.S. Treasuries and CDs at this point. And it's, I don't know that it's the it's other securities, not treasure, not not federal treasuries. Okay, excluding those. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what was the page you had for your first? The one right before that, page uh, seven. Page seven. I'm, I'm added up this, this, right, the very, very bottom line there says um, third party custodian designated by the treasurer. I'd, I'd just like to seek a legal um, uh, question. Can we change that wording, wording in this meeting or shall we bring it back? Should we bring it back? We need to bring it back because I, I'm concerned that that's the treasurer's responsibility for because there, there is supposed to be this concept between arm's length, mm -hmm. the treasurer who has this fiduciary duties as a sign. Um, so maybe we could come up with some language that allows the board to provide input or feedback or that kind of thing. But I don't know if I want to completely replace the treasurer with the board. The treasurer has no problem with that at all. What's that? Being the sole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, Give it to the board. Yeah. Not commenting on how great the treasurer is <laughs> or maybe not so how great the board is or anything like that or the reverse. Like it's not a comment on any of the figures. It's just more of a, uh, under the government code and under the law, it's a clearly question of what has to be within the purview of the treasurer. So I'll, well, I, we can take a look at it and bring it back. And in my opinion, I wanted to bring it up for discussion. Absolutely. And in a legal viewpoint, if this is the appropriate language yeah. and the appropriate role for the treasurer, and if the treasurer seeks the board's input, then that's his or her prerogative, as, that, as I understand. Right. It. I think it's a good question. I I would be <laughs> uncomfortable saying that the board can't have any input, the rest of the board, or they can't do anything. But I do know the treasurer has some particular responsibilities that I don't want to completely delegate uh, the, to the whole board. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So yeah. I'm happy if, if the board so desires, I'm happy to table this and bring it back after we've had a chance to look at that issue thoroughly. Well, can we uh, make the adjustments that are in there? Because that's not one of the adjustments that we're seeking. Um, can we approve the adjustments and then bring it back for that language change? Absolutely. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Okay. I, I voiced my sure. concern. No, I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, apparently, the treasurer should have read that policy. Mm -hmm. Got it. Hey, uh, nothing about that. <laughs> and do we need a motion yes, to approve yes. this now? Um, sure. do, can I have a motion to approve this for the language and what make the change later? Is that what you're saying? So we're just going to prove the, the, the original change. It's, it's there's a t couple of uh, small yeah, language small changes, change. dates. Uh, days, uh, number of days oh. from 30 to 45. And oh, that. There's yeah. a county uh, yeah. typo in there. Yeah, so, we so the, uh, Los Angeles, El Dorado. Oh, and we added the 120 day policy. For oh. the... <laughs> so, yeah, we would need a, a motion to approve this one as, as read, and then we'll bring it back for the other language change later. Okay, I'll go ahead and move to improve, uh, approve the. And so the adoption of the updating investment policy. Second. Second with direction to staff to uh, bring this back for uh, review. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 And opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And then uh, F. Oh, or item e, e, e. E. On yeah, page e. two of. Uh, 
the consent calendar agenda in the middle just before service application <laughs> appeals by route. It says irrigation water deliveries are scheduled to commence on May 1st. Um, yeah, so that to open some discussion about the possibility of what it takes to have it in this is in this the middle is a, of October. Um, this is a carry out. This is this will this does not hold the same weight that the irrigation season determination does. So that this will change as the season changes. So whatever the board board votes on later on during the board meeting will follow when the irrigation is delivered. Okay, can I make a, another comment? We have a person from the public that is on a timeline to make a statement about this. Is this appropriate for him to comment on the irrigation committee at this point? Um, I'll, uh, I think it's okay. Does it relate to this item? Yes. Specific. If it relates to this item, that's fine. This item well, that here. actually relates to another item. It's but... on the consent calendar. There's there's similar items. Yeah, uh, not the one down in. Yeah, yeah, they can they can they, provided. Yeah, there, if there's overlapping on the items, that person can make comment on them. Mr. Scott, we have the latitude to do so this time. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do uh, a three minutes, Mr. Scott. Our timer's not working up there, so I'm going to keep it up unless it is working. Now. I was just going to mainly say most of the same people here that were here last time, mm -hmm. so they heard my spiel. Um, I was most going to state two things. First of all, if you want to ask any questions on on what I told you before, or I can reiterate some of that stuff. Um, basically, the ones that don't know me here, um, I worked for CDF which is now Cal Fire for 37 years, and uh, also fire forest service for five. I've been involved in fire multiple, most all my life. And I was um, just asking for a change uh, in, uh, in the times we, we start the water supply to the person out here. I was looking at a, a, around the 15th of uh, May versus the 1st. Um, and basically what I would, what it was is the paper I showed you and I have some of the, the details here is the, I just took the statistics for Northern California fire, not Southern California fire because it's completely different zones. And um, basically we have about a, uh, uh, we have about 15% of fires for the most deadliest California wildfire start or a burn into um, into October. And also we have uh give it back here. About 25% of the most destructive fire has burned into October or started in October or after October from Northern County. So my only my biggest concern with that and throughout the late years I showed um basically whether of uh, when it's cooling down in October and when it's warmed up and in uh, May, and I, I thought that a um, a better time would be around the 15th. I'm not asking exactly for a specific 15th day. Um, usually, as as we all know, or um, this to have been since I've been up here for 55 years, that the Mother's Day has been the start of the garden season. Um, we don't have frost, and we have other problems, other problems. So. Basically, I was thinking to start around that time, whatever's easiest for the water company to start your water supply. I'm not sure how many days you've got to turn on beforehand to get it down to um, all its personnel in the area. So basically, you know, they want to start the Monday after Mother's Day, which is usually around the 12th or 13th or the 15th or something like that. But my main concern is we don't have, I want to have as much water as we can into the, as far into the October as we can keep in your five month um, irrigation season. Um, so we can have that water available for the possibility of fires up here. And for the reservoir to be as full as possible if they had this pull from the reservoirs. Mr. Scott, I just want to let you know that we did include your charts in our board agenda item for later on. So okay. that the board has had received those um, and, and they have been able to review all the information you submitted to the uh, you know. all I have is there's any other questions um I just have another meeting I have to go this afternoon I will wait for later uh, can I say something sure go ahead director yeah. Thorne uh just so you know the irrigation committee that looked into this and I think you spoke to us all yes that, uh has recommended start of May 15th 
Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I've, I've heard. I would just ask to come back up here and mm -hmm. there might be some new faces that want to ask some questions. Mm -hmm. One or two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I got something that involves him. Well, he was asking about how long it takes to turn the water on and, and off. Isn't it roughly about two weeks to start the ditch? Yeah, we, we ramp up slowly. It how takes long between it one take and two weeks. To shut it off. And is there still water flowing down? You so know, between I would say two and seven days, but we yeah, we definitely slow it down. So if you're shutting it off at the fifteenth of October, there's you should you, we don't shut it off like hard shut off on yeah. the fifteenth. We shut it off, we start shutting it off a few days before that. Yeah. See, so there's not gonna be any water coming down if there's a fire after the fifteenth. Yeah. But typically if you look at the timing, October fifteenth is, <laughs> is generally the end of fire fire season. Well, Louisiana fire season now, CDF or CAL fire runs it year round. <clears throat> but in the in the old days, yeah. it was history yeah. about the end history. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah, see you, Ben. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. I hope you can drive home safe. It's snowing out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's still snowing. Yeah, yeah. it's all like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think we'll need a motion on this one still. So my concern still is how it reads on. Um, <laughs> The second page about irrigation deliveries are scheduled to commence on May first. Is that the default? So that's just the default, and that's that's yeah. why um, once we set the actual schedule, that will set. This is, <clears throat> as I said before, this one is um, technically it comes after, but we don't. You can't really vote on who gets water. You can't like make a decision like I don't want customer X oh, I, to I get water. Yeah. And so this just follows that the the recommendation of. The, the, the irrigation season. Okay. So we'll discuss later what is scheduled. As Correct. Opposed to that the, will be in the action items. That, that addresses my question. Especially if the board can't meet to decide the irrigation season, it's going to move forward May 1st. Really? They're going to water. Really, the, the item is for irrigation applications, not for season. Okay. It's not a resolution. No. It's a okay. It's okay. 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 We can use the language on that that we use otherwise that says the <laughs> give the range that yeah way. we can work on that and that'll, yeah. that'll in the future we'll we'll do that because the last year was the first year we did consent and i will make sure that we have a range next time oh my god okay okay good good suggestion thank you for that okay i got a question on that item as well okay go ahead mr Perfect. um on the chart on page two that shows the miners inches applied for and everything does that include all the late applications as well it includes up to up to the day exactly what we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. What was the date? Well, it, it yeah it includes everything. It's assuming the ones that haven't applied will still get, will still receive their water. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is even the people that haven't applied. Yeah. And it's and it's, it's uh, summarize that in the table. Well, it's like some of them um, year after year they don't turn their application in, but there's usually always general water available in there. Yeah. You know, so we assume that's they're gonna, you know, want okay. that water once right. they start and they'll see the water. That was my question. Okay. 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 I just have one. I'm sorry. I have one question on that. Yeah. Where this there's, there's a comment on almost well, most of these that says no explanation from customers. So if they don't turn in their application or they turn it in late, they're supposed to tell the district why they're late. Yeah, as I think really? you know, what it comes down to is say if there's a dispute between um, availability of sort of section, you know, and I think we talked about that during the ordinance, you know, the application period. Well, oh, no, I understand yeah. that, but the, but the way the statement every application was received in the mail with no explanation from customer. And it's like, I'm not sure. Like, uh, uh, it's almost like they need an up to their doctor. It's like, where are you reading? Yeah, which one are you reading? Well, like on this one, it's oh, one of them. Go, but go, most page, of them. Go, go page, oh, page three. Page three, okay. zero eight one, Ralph. Okay. And it's like, um, you know, there's information like stated she thought her husband mailed them and found she didn't mail it. Like, I think it's because there's, really? if, if you well, if you have some sort of excuse, <laughs> I was in the hospital, I was, you know, something, then you can get, you know, a bit of grace. But since they missed the deadline, we are not, the grace doesn't come, but there also isn't an area. I don't think we're having, we're not going to cut them off yeah. because they're still available inches in that Well, area. that's what I'm I'm asking mainly because it's like, why do you have to have this statement in here if they're going to give it to them anyway? 
Well, well, to protect there is more than one application. I think it's just to protect you as the, as the district, and it doesn't show any, you know, there's no personal information, so nobody's really being called out in there. Um, but it's just, it's for you, in case you decide that, that you want to reduce the amount of inches. And <laughs> this is just <laughs> transparency. You, it's what you just turn your ring around. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can <Okay>. relate. <laughs> okay. Uh, is does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, like we just we just had a customer whose parent passed away, mm -hmm. and they didn't know where any of the mail had been or had gone. Well, yeah, that's kind so, of a, an extraordinary thing. Well, so you have that that's person point. fighting over one inch with another person who said, I didn't feel like turning it in on time. Oh. And they're both fighting for the same inch. And it's kind of like, gives okay. you guys more context on who to pick. But we don't have that okay. issue. So we don't, yeah, right. yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody's that requested water is getting water. Right. Okay. Should, should do it. Okay. okay. Now we're up. Oh, I, I move that we accept the uh, approving irrigation applications for 2024 season resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Item F, consent calendar. No, that isn't it. That's all. Yeah. 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 Okay. Office manager's report. And are there any board members like to have any questions or comments and find out? Yeah. Well, any board members like to comment on this before she starts? No. Okay, go ahead. It's pretty straightforward. They're just the financials for February, November 29th. Mm -hmm. I added uh, Mr. McDonald's little red line in the table. That shows our target area. Mm. Not a line in the same line in the band. That further clarifies. Further, I mean, further clarifies. That is by Mr. McDonald's. Yeah, but you already requested. Yeah. Her. Anyway, that's that's crystal. Now you did. Yeah. You, now we know where in the band we should be. Now we know where we are, looking at. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> that's your whole report. <laughs> well, the report is just for you to make. Talking about a red line. Yeah, <laughs> the report is for you guys to make comments on. I'm brought up like that. I'm a half a camp. Right? We do have a public comment. Were we doing the, the budget items. review as well? With I will do that after. Yeah. So we'll wait till. Let's see. Right now, we'll wait till. Well, you're finished. Now we we'll have time for a uh, public comment. Um, Cherie, would you like to is make a on, comment? Is it on yeah. the budget? Yeah. No. Not yet. Okay. This well, is the that's not part of the. We'll when it's the budget. Yeah. Okay, you're on number five, aren't you? Yes. Okay, it and says fiscal year 24-25 budget review presentation. Yes, we would like to do the presentation, then we'll take any questions based on that for after we do the presentation. We wanted to open it up for the financial, if you had any questions on any of the financials. Yeah. No, I, no, I do not. Okay, so we, we'll reserve that... Uh, public comment portion after the, the budget is presented. Okay. So, so we, we'll, we can go right into the budget presentation right now. Yeah, we will as, okay, so fire away. So um, this was uh, showed at the finance committee. There was a few questions, a few answers. We went over all of the uh, different departments. There is a, if you look at all of the, um, different categories we have the changes in percentage for total labor and then the non-labor expenses and then a total at the very bottom i think those are the, kind of the most telling obviously labor is is something that kind of increases every year um we're trying to really tighten the belt straps on the materials and supplies so in a majority of areas those numbers are going down um, of particular note uh, 5,300 is uh, PG&E's utility charge is uh, considerably higher than it has been in the past. Um, so that's actually in the neighborhood of the 20 to 25% increase in that 
um, in that budget. Uh, other than that, the way that this reads is anything that is in red um, is a is a going up. It's a it's a change upward. Anything in blue is a change downward. Um, there was some things that we adjusted after the finance committee meeting. So what you're seeing is kind of the best and the brightest of the budget. And if you want to go to page, um, all dated expenses and, re and re actually the revenue first, that's probably the, the this page right here. Uh, I'm not sure what page, four, 15, excuse me. Um, so this shows revenue that we are receiving into the district. Uh, you can see it's very similar to last year. We do have an increase in property taxes. We are, you know, including the new investment uh, revenue. And when we come to the bottom line, excuse me, we are going up um, slightly in revenue from last year. We are still trying to assess the uh, amount that we're going to include for grants as we are still working out what grants we're going after and which ones we may be awarded. We are kind of <clears throat> holding off on that number because there's some things in the works that we're trying to figure out. Um, if you want to go to the next page, <clears throat> it's the consolidated expenses for the entire district. Um, looks like through our calculations, total labor is going up by 12%. Um, Non-labor is going up by approximately 7%. And then the total departmental expenses is going up by 10%. Um, <clears throat> this does include the salaries for uh, the new uh, potential MOU. So the, the numbers that you see in labor are, are very close. I <clears throat> am not including the numbers for local ones MOU in this as of yet. So that will slightly adjust this as we move forward. I'd like to open it up to the board member, board members for any, uh, oh, let me go with the capital improvement, excuse me. Capital improvement plan. Um, generally, we are pushing everything kind of just forward one year from last year's plan. Um, instead of, you know, Piling in a, a, a large a bunch of new projects. I'm waiting for the castle study to be finalized, which should be any month now. And since we're working through a cost of service analysis, I want to make sure that we have a, a tight capital improvement plan moving forward so we can incorporate all of those different pieces into the puzzle. We are continuing with the priority system of priority one, two, and three. As we get grants, we're we're becoming fairly successful at getting and winning grants. So it is limiting the other projects that we can do around the district just because of manpower. So as we get more grants, the priority two and three projects are the ones that are, are less, um, uh, eight, we're, less we're, we're less able to do. So we have those on the bottom in the grant section. So we have the potential grant funded capital projects and then we have, you know, kind of the future longer term projects. So I'd love to open it up for any questions or comments or uh, uh, from the board. And then uh, after that, the public. Director Saunders. For some of the health insurance increases, some are 32%, some are 20, some are 17. So we have differences over there. Changes in employee level. Uh, yeah, we we uh, we yeah. had um, several uh, added dependents. Okay. I'll say that. <laughs> and then uh, in capital improvement plan, um, do we have uh, the in when we're gonna get the switch over in the hydros? I think the first contract may be twenty twenty seven. It's twenty six, and so we're still assessing what that's going to mean and what that's going to cost. Um, before I want to put anything in there, we're trying to do a bunch of research. Okay, thank you. Jack Thornburg, what's that backflow down there? Yeah, so that's um, $15,000. We're actually working on trying to figure out what we're going to do. That's um, 
a attachment that they're wanting in uh, the zone to work on their tractor. So it's an attachment that they're looking for. My assessment is we may look at buying them a mini X, but I'm not sure. So we're trying to assess that one. That may change. Oh, it's a backflow attachment to the tractor. That is correct. Yeah. Well, that's a lot cheaper than a mini X. You, you might have add attachment on there. So um, we can do that. Well, I'm, I would look at a, a used uh, X, not something brand new. Just for clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can have yeah, it. Go ahead. Director, are you finished, Mr. Yep. Um, on the capital improvement plan, uh, second line down, infrastructure replacement at headquarters building. That was correct. That's not advisable at this point. Is that? Yeah, correct? that's why we pushed. So the 10,000 is small maintenance items that we have, mm -hmm. um, i.e., air conditioner, stuff like that. The 200,000, we're moving that out to 25, 26, because we just don't know what what the plan is. We're, we're trying to assess. We still are having somebody look at the building to see if it's feasible. Um, it's an old building, an old cinder block building, and it's just not as easy as just knocking the wall down. You know, there's a bunch of engineering that has to go into it. Thank you. Go up. Any more directors? Saunders? At this time, I'd like to open this up for public comment. And I see Mr. Dowd's hand raised. Stephen Dowd. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, put that back up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the capital improvement, uh, I see the dump truck. Is it too early to talk about dump trucks? Too late. Well, no, yeah, it's too late. <laughs> so we bought one? We, are, we're, we have authorization to buy one. We have not bought one yet. Oh, okay. Okay. And then on the other thing, the dam fee. Uh, went up thirty three thousand dollars. It's a damn fee, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's not something that we have any control over. The state did that to us. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. Well, we... That's ridiculous. The damn, the damn, the damn fee didn't go up. I think you might be um, interpreting it incorrectly. Um, some of the water right vermin went up, but the damn fee is. Oh, the damn fee actually went down by two thousand yeah. dollars. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. We, we we over budget a little bit last year for it because oh. it's based on a calculation on high of the dam <clears throat> classification. Thirty three ends. Thirty three ends are um, our our water right fee. We pay the state board for all our water rights we have. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we pay a couple of the other the other connection fee that's tied to distribution. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Ariane and Cherie, you have a question at this segment. Do you have the floor? Yeah, can you hear can you hear me? Loud and, loud and clear. Hello. Loud and clear, Hello? Cherie. Okay. Yeah. Um, at the March 28th <laughs> Finance Committee meeting, I brought up the issue of the pension expense account that was added to each department. Nick stated the office staff was told by the CPAs that according to Gatsby Rule or statement 68 the district needed to include this information on their financial statements. Here is part of the statement, a part of statement 68. Beginning with fiscal year 14 to 15, GASPI statement 68 will require reporting of net pension liability in accrual-based financial statement, unquote. A budget is not an accrual-based financial statement. It is a projection of revenues and expenses. This information can be put on a balance sheet, for example. You can, if you want, put information in the budget as a comment or a notation. And in my opinion, it should not be in a budget. Thank you. Noted, Cherie. Thank you very much for that info. We'll take into consideration. Thank you. Um, are there any board members that wish to make any further comments? Do you have any questions? Oh, Director Seaman. Um, that CDS garage, is that the one in Auburn Lake Trail? It, it's adjacent to, yes, part of the, um, the, the, um, the, the leash the, field, yes. The pump is? Um, the building that has the pump. Close, close to there, but not, not exactly where the pump is. No, it's it's more, I'm not sure what that area is. But we have like a couple. I, I, got a, I got a consensus from the, the crowd. I mean, it's just the system. It's adjacent to it in, in the pool hall and first game. It's where we have all our um, uh, it's on up on the yeah. Okay. Leach fields are. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further board member comments or questions, we'll close this section. <laughs> now for informational items and board reports, I would like to start with 
Director Stovall. Um, I attended the finance committee along with my colleague here. And uh, I'm impressed with the quality perspective and the homework that each of the committee members have been doing. In my opinion, in their opinion, it appears that the budget process is on track and, and making good progress. Thank you, sir. Director Saunders. Yep, I will uh, have my uh, board report will be in the minutes, so you can uh, look it up online afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Aqua board meeting is, executive board meeting is tomorrow, where we will be uh, going over the legislative support, oppositions, and uh, or the uh, Association of California Water Agencies. So when that's done, I'll be able to bring back uh, some more uh, <laughs> legislative decisions to see if the district wants to uh, be in alignment with Aqua. But other than that, the district positions that we support are in my report. <laughs> Nothing new is coming up except uh, we know uh, the main, well, the week of May 9th is the Aqua Conference, and I will try to set up a meeting during the first two days to see if we can meet with the uh, executive uh, officer from uh, JPIA to discuss insurance issues. And then also I have a town hall coming up in uh, April 13th. So we can see flyers around the Facebook. That's it for me. But we're not allowed to go. Your wife can come. <laughs> you like for the food. I get that a lot. <laughs> you can't come through the food. You can come for the food and music. <laughs> yeah, musical instruments uh, be not required. Okay, uh, Director Thornborough. I get that. Vice President Seaman. Um, just the um, irrigation thing, which I will discuss later. Okay. Uh, next slide. Oh. And then uh, my report is that I have a JPI Aqua Conference on May 6th through 9th. And I also attended liaison for the uh, Finance Committee. And I'll comment a little on that when it comes to that section. <laughs> and now I'll open it to public comment. Michael, where is that meeting going to be on the 13th? Pilot Hill Grange. What's that? Grange. Uh, the lunch lunch starts at one, lunch and music one to two, and two to four is the meeting part. Very good, thank you. Okay. So, so the first hour is just social only? Is that first hour is just social, so the board members can come for so the So it's session. inclusive of social hour and the food? Yes, yeah. food and social at the same time. Okay. And, music. and music. And music, yes. And then I will kick any board members. You'll need a sergeant at arms. Yes, I'll need a sergeant at arms. I'll be taking care of kicking them out. <laughs> or we might just kick you out. Well, so we can <laughs> 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 Thank you, board members, for your board reports. Uh, now, legislative liaison report. Do you have any? No, just that. Uh, We'll be uh, going over the full list uh, tomorrow at the Aqua meeting and I'll put it back for our recommendations. Okay. Okay, now we'll transition to the op manager's report. Do you yeah. care to present? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah sorry. Um, so we're going to have a copy. I know it kind of came in a little late. <laughs> Yeah, don't be mad that it wasn't included in the agenda. What kind of scatter? Yeah, was enjoying himself. No, we didn't get Was it the one with oh. pictures on it? Yeah. 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 Oh. It's a colorful oh, one. Yeah. A cute one. <laughs> so, um, start off with the um, sort of reporting for Stumpy Meadows. Obviously, it's still full out. It's still, still full capacity right now. Um, our uh, production numbers are starting to increase, um, but they're on, or they're on average for this time of year, maybe down a little bit over historical historical numbers. Um, as those are directly related to the gross water use over time, so it should down slightly as well. Um, all our sampling met all thinking water requirements. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later in the report. We did some work on a back a backwash tank wastewater um, waste pump motor assembly and replaced it in week three. 
Um, new on to the second page is the same kind of summary of the work um, that takes place during this last month. Um, we really starting to ramp up for getting some, we had some good weather this month compared to last month. We were able to get some additional construction work done on, on top of the, the normal maintenance work that we do. Um, a lot of people are cleaning up from some storm damage on trees down, repairing the canals we, as as needed, um, doing improvements to the canal, um, installing some raw water flumes. We'll talk about a little bit later too. Um, doing some um, critical maintenance to you know ARVs, PRVs, um, um, uh, our Buckeye conduit valve. So um, you'll see there's, we did, a, we did a lot of work, a lot of work this month. Um, and so we're just getting ready for um, irrigation season. It takes a lot of effort to get that. I'll move on to the next page, just some examples, some of the work. Um, this is replacing, the first one's replacing the PRV along the main line coming out of Georgetown down towards uh, Kelsey. Um, and this, uh, box just to understand what, what it's doing this so we have a on the left the smaller one's kind of a normal normal daily flow a normal demand um one on the right is generally operates when there's a higher demand or a fire flow that's why you see two inside that box uh, the picture on the bottom is that our our buckeye um, hydro so there's a valve going into the hydro there that we did some maintenance on um so it's original valves we resurfaced it, removed the entire inspected it, made sure it properly. Um, we use that quite a bit to make sure we can get our um move on to the next page. Um this is the way I was talking about earlier. This is the sweet water treatment plant. This is a a pump that our operators um assessed, um procured all the parts for and in construction rebuilt. Um, will not rebuild, replace. Um, it handles a lot of uh, solids in its in state of operation. Uh, it's a good example of you know some of the work we do here is you know this this project we, we actually had our site. would have solved some of the problem but it could have you know kept occurring over time and we actually ended up doing the project for right around ten thousand dollars with us in-house doing it with the, you know skilled operators we have um so moving on to the next one this is kind of a couple of examples of service line breaks this general stuff um you'll see some of the impacts from you know breaks we have you know and requires us to go out um in the middle of the night and repair these and i know we had a in the previous <clears throat> area we had a, a water
Sorry, you got kicked off of mine for a second there. Is it better for me? Or is it better for me? Um, could be whatever reason. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we should take a recess until it's back on. I, I think it is back on now. Okay. The live stream never started. Uh, Mr. Campbell, can you just pop How in is and it see now? if you can hear us? How is it? I can hear you now. It was it was off there for a bit when you guys came back online. Okay, thank you so much for that. Okay, all right, uh, thank you. Okay. So just towards wrapping up <clears throat> in here, um, uh, we did receive the um, one piece of equipment from the Cal Fire grant, and we haven't really got we had the manufacturer come up. We kind of did a demo out back. We haven't really got ramped up with any work yet. We're kind of waiting for the weather to clear up a little bit here. And we'll start putting it to use. Um, the other uh, um, skid steer, um, there's a couple extra parts, but it should hopefully be in the next couple of weeks or so. We should see that. Um, other than that, I'm going to talk about a lot of the stuff and the other projects we have going on in our in the action items. So I'm not going to cover all those right now. Um, in this last page of the monthly demand water assessment, which um, is lower than uh, previous years, so. A lot of times that's more weather weather related than um, customer demand related. You know, like what we do. That's all I have for now. Any board member have any questions of our op manager, Director Seaman? Are you putting on putting uh, maybe an electronic uh, eye on that uh, on that flume so you don't have to go out there and look at it all the time. Yeah, so this is part one of it. So really, yeah, that's really end goal is to have they have they have a stills on them. Sonic, yeah. So we'll just do we'll do like a a cell point. So then we can see like especially if we have a a break or something, or if we have something gets plugged and all of a sudden you know it'll kind of be like a master meter. See a flow drop and then oh we have to respond over before. Yeah. Um, customers have we, notice it. Have they heard anything on our meters? Uh... Yeah, no. <laughs> That's it. That's a, expect that question every year. I know. Yeah. We'll be sure to let you know as soon as we hear something. You'll probably hear from us. Do you before. want me to make a call for you? Absolutely. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Any other director questions uh, before? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I thought it was for Alexis originally, but I was one day I went outside to see what all the commotion was, and they were outside checking the fire hydrants, mm -hmm. and, and your men were out there. Uh, flush in and had the baffle and the chlorine and all that stuff and yep. and it was a cloudy day but it wasn't raining but they were sure wet yeah be sometimes the diffusers does there we have a couple different types and some one diffuser. of the, the yeah. diffuser yeah you kind of put a chlorine tab in there and some of them what two of them do kind of spray that was spurting water like the kids slip and slide whatever they are and they're just squirting water all over the place uh, they were soaking wet from that hose and it's got duct tape on it, and there were about eight leaks in a ten foot section. I was right. wondering if we could spring for another hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheaper, to buy, <laughs> cheaper to buy duct tape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah I mean, I got a video. Yeah, it's kind I was of funny. Aware of it, so yeah, yeah, no, I, it would be I, nice in the summer, but I, it's wet. And I, I have the photos. I'll show you. Um, I he his first day back was yesterday, so we just haven't had a chance to get with him about it. But yeah, we were gonna. But well, they were content. Them. I was just saying, holy cow. I really love it in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I have. Um, okay. Um, water resources managers report. Alexis. Yeah. <clears throat> we had sixty-five routine inspections. Seven of those were escrowed. Um, we got seven point one two inches of rain last month. Um, the big one was we had a spill in ALT that ended March 11th. It was a pretty hefty one, and it's because the sewer was blocked by this. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys want to look at it. It's, it's, clean. it's, it's clean. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's one of those uh, VMI things. Went from a four inch board. It. It's been sanitized. So it's a uh, bandable plug. It, yeah, it's a plug. So somebody probably had it on their system and it. One of those from uh, I don't know. But on top of that, there was. From a three inch orifice to a three eighths inch orifice. I'll, I'll pass. There was. It's an expandable plug. It's no big deal. There was another item that was in there. So it just fit perfect. Mm. Like, oh, in, yeah. Here, Brian, take your twin back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang at my office. Uh, 
Brian and I actually did everything we could to try and get that out of there and figure out what it was. We cameraed the line. We uh, had it hydro flush. We tried to send stuff down there to get it back out. We weren't sure what it was, but the flow was backed up too much for us to do anything. So we ended up having to have a contractor come in and yank it out of there. Um, but it's all brand new um, and flowing just fine. So we didn't do a no spill, obviously, for March because we had a spill. Um, we also had, this is a new one. It's the annual inventory report for CEQAs. That's the where we do the no spill certifications. Um, it was basically a 10-year review of any spills, how much, and when. Uh, then I had the NPDES report due March 1st as well. Um, that's about it. Weather stayed pretty much the same. And then we've got, you know, our vein chart down there. This is an NPDES report. Um, all, all that all that is is so when we uh, have a uh, a break or something like that, we track how much water is spilled. It's the chlorinated yeah. water. So they consider it, uh, what is it, national pollution discharge? Yeah. Elimination. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I've never had So I... That one's due March first, but it was significantly less than last year, actually. I think because we're tracking a better with cardiograph. So, yeah. any board member comments, questions? Oh, and okay. Next, we have the general management report. And due to constraints of time, Nichols, can you set an example? Yeah, I'll uh, be short, concise. I will be very concise. Yes. You can read about where I was and what I did. I just wanted to go over the last, the second page is informational updates. We did um, submit a federal appropriation to uh, Senator Butler Padilla and Representative. <laughs> um, I will give uh, Liz and Adam a huge shout out. They, um, Adam worked right up until the moment he was on an airplane to leave our great country, um, trying to get this together and get this in. So I very much appreciate his uh, diligence and dedication and, and Liz also for putting it all together. So we are asking them to help us to build the hydroelectric facility at Edson Dam. Um, and so that we asked for uh, $5 million from it's it's we asked for from everybody, but it's generally the same five million dollars. It's not like we're gonna get fifteen million dollars.
I'm chair, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. Stand like this. Right. Yeah. Are we? Must have been my, me, getting up about the chair. Kid Harley, the, uh, the three, 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 no three, audio, and the Zoom's offline. Back on the line. That's a liar. Okay. Not the Not the Not the Not the okay. okay. And we're back. Okay. Back online. So the state appropriation that we applied for, oh, you go ahead. It's 3.09 p.m. and we're back from recess. <clears throat> the uh, state appropriation that we applied for is a, we're asking for the Onion Creek diversion to be reconstructed for a half a million dollars. Um, this was something that was uh, destroyed during the King Fire by Cal Fire as they were um, bulldozing the hillside. So we're asking for some money to help reconnect that diversion back into Stumpy. Um, <clears throat> uh, next, um, Amergy is a company that wants to put the uh, water wheels in the ditches. So we are planning to meet with them uh, tomorrow. Um, and we're gonna start doing some assessments to see whether we, they wanna put them in and where they wanna put them in. This is a no cost to us, but we did sign a letter of intent to uh, just have them come up and do some assessments with us. And then lastly, uh, CSDA the district awards, we are applying for district transparency certificate of e excellence and district of distinction accreditation. Um, the policies that you see today, some of those are part of that. These will be awarded to the district if we um, receive them at the September CSDA conference. That's it. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, is that Onion Creek diversion all gravity fed? I've looked at it on the map and it looks like it's possible. It is gravity. The the the, the we're anti-gravity now. We go towards the South Fork. Yeah, it goes, yeah. And then we have to gravity it toward the North Fork. So we we the divert it toward the North Fork and then and then it's gravity in the back of the stumpy. Okay. But it is a gravity to the past that switches the divide between south and middle fork. It well when we reconnect the diversion. We, we basically changed the way it flows from one side of the divide to the other. Okay, thank you. Vice Chairman Seaman? Do we need to, as directors or individuals, contact these representatives <laughs> to support this bill? Um, so they don't really look for this kind of local government. Well, we did get support from the local senator and our board of supervisor for these projects. Um, I'm just wondering, since we, you know, we have access to Kylie. Getting there. You're welcome. You're welcome to um, <laughs> and, to reach out to them. Yeah. Um, and and then as the process moves along, we will continue to utilize our federal advocates. So anytime you want to reach out to them, I can actually put you in touch with federal advocates as well. So if you want to, however you want to do that, you guys are all more than welcome to uh, to advocate for the project and and continue. To, yes. Thank you. Any other board member? Yeah. Okay, now I'll open it up for public comment. Mr. Dow, do you have the floor? Stephen Dow, um, have we ever purchased that drone and trained anybody to run it? I'm going to ask Adam, I believe we have. Yeah, we have purchased it, yeah. yeah. Are, we, are we using it? Uh, yes and no. We haven't actually used it yet. Um, I, have to, I have to take that fake test. I've gone through the class, and since this is a time, time thing to get the final license for it, yeah. You, and then you said we're approved for the sure. so the dump truck. Are we renting a, a, a we free axle? Steve, unfortunately, this isn't exactly, well, I guess you have yeah, dump truck. You need to talk about dump trucks a little bit. <laughs> I, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want you to talk on a turn, so go ahead. Yeah, we rent this. Yeah, we're renting a smaller one. Right? So you can pull yeah. the new trailer. Not yet. Yeah, no, it's, oh. it's not. We are, we're not renting the same size. It's smaller. It's smaller. And there's no air brakes on the other one right now. And also, um, you said we're still spilling at Stumpy before there's snow down here. Was there snow up at Stumpy when uh, at the beginning of the month? Um, yeah. Because there's if there's a snowpack, we're going to have water for a while. Yeah, snowpack's not. It's I will talk about it later. It's not what it was last year. It's only about half of what it was last year. But there's snow up there for sure. Yeah. I've measured 41 inches of H2O since just this year, and 15 inches um, uh, March in March and you and. Uh, Alexis, you said you had seven down in yeah. cool. We have the amount of water up here. We do down there. Sometimes, yeah. 
I live right across the street from the plant, so we haven't gotten anything that might have surveillance. So up here would yeah. be different, I would say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nichols, any uh, closing comments? Okay. Now we'll I'll now close the public forum period. Comments? Now we'll talk about committee reports. Uh, the first one up was the Irrigation <laughs> Committee and Director Seaman or Thornburg. You could comment. You know, you want me to do it? Okay. Uh, we met, uh, discussed some options on um, information, trying to get information out to reduce costs <laughs> of the district. Uh, so if we maybe, uh, we've, well, we've sent staff to uh, look at how we can take different zones and how we can minimize staff time out at those zones. So that's what we're asking for um, coming back uh, to the committee for next month. You have anything to add? And? Well, and the biggie is that uh, uh, the Irrigation Committee is recommending we start irrigation season, season mark, um, May. May 15th and go to mid October 15th. Mm -hmm. Any board comments, questions for your gauge committee? Okay. Uh, Finance Committee, uh, Director Stovall, you initially made a comment, uh, an accolades to the board. Finance Committee, excuse me. Uh, I just would. Refer what I said before is a hardworking committee, mm -hmm. thorough, mm -hmm. impressed with their professionalism, mm -hmm. knowledge, and really digging into it. It's a very finance committee. Um, uh, thank you for their reinstitution. It's a real asset to the board and district. Mm -hmm. And I thought um, um, uh, the same. And the way they filter, screen, question, recommend, and request court clarification and request for more information or um, data would be provided for them to screen and to then filter through, if you will, to get us uh, better information so we can make better decisions when it finally gets to us. So I see that and so do you. And I also uh, uh, told them that I wouldn't be available at the next meeting. Plus it would be a good opportunity for Vice President Seaman to sit in and and for her to see what we see on a monthly basis and uh, uh, maybe find uh, the same appreciation we, we have for our committee. And uh, and if need be, uh, she could, yeah, if she needs one or two meetings, I'm open to that as long as uh, she feels she needs to go uh, to audit. But uh, that is pretty much all I have to say. Nicholas, do you have any comments to make regarding your input for the budget this year? No, I made some earlier during the budget presentation. We definitely took some of their considerations in. They did make a few comments based on, you know, some different categories and, and how we're looking moving forward. So we, we definitely took those into consideration. Okay. And the next meeting will be April 25th at 3 p.m. And uh, um, sure, Director, uh, <clears throat> me, uh, Mr. Dow. Yeah, go ahead. Do you, would you like to... Yes, I just want to commend the uh, Finance Committee. I've been to all the meetings, Finance Committee meetings and Irrigation Committee meetings for many years, and uh, these guys are doing a great job. And I cannot imagine, and I, I'm flabbergasted, that the past boards before you guys were on here and before Cindy Garcia and Mike Saunders were, were there, the past boards decided to uh, scrap the Finance Committee because they didn't think they were necessary. And this is, they are necessary. This is a necessary function. Give everybody a heads up on what's going on. And uh, great job. Thank you. Yeah, I would just encourage Nicholas to keep the, the uh, advertisements open for a couple more committee members since we're one above the uh, minimum on the committee. Um, okay, thank you. No questions in the, up there. Okay, now we have the uh, ad hoc committee for policy writing. We have Director Saunders and or Seaman to make comment. Yes, I have a couple of more meetings before we take a 
break if it's an ad hoc policy committee. So we'll have to break and start open again. And uh, we'll try and bring back the uh, investments policy. We have a couple of policies which are being reviewed by legal, but we continue to push through. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. And how about the grant writing committee? Oh, and the next one, as necessary, whatever that is. Uh, now we have grant writing committee next meeting on June 5th, uh, Saunders and Stovall. So we actually didn't meet. I'll, uh, I'll if you don't mind, I'll we didn't yeah. meet on uh, the, the last meeting uh, as there was a conflict with a few of the members from the committee. We plan to meet Monday um, at a yet to, yet to be determined time. Um, we are having a few conflicts. So we're just trying to make sure we have the right time. There is a, a worksheet included in the board packet that shows the grants we've received, the grants that we've submitted, and the projects that we are looking for grants to continue with. I did include the new federal and state appropriations that we just applied for within that grant worksheet. And I also included um, solar loan, a solar loan program. Um, and as of um, yesterday, I spoke to uh, the solar consultant that did a presentation. There is a grant program excuse me, that we are going to be um, assessing and looking at that is not included on that worksheet just yet, but it's about $4 million to pay for solar and batteries. Um, and the only match would be 33%. So it would be it would be something that the district could utilize to uh, complete that project for less cost. So that's the grant pay update. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Finally, item E, uh, Labor Negotiations Committee, uh, Board Liaisons, Director Thornborough, and myself. Um, I just know that we have some closed session meetings and we had a special board meeting and we're working away and there'll be more discussion of this and the action items to come later. Uh, no meeting scheduled. So, no. Okay. Uh, any other public comment? I don't see none. Any more board comments? None. Okay. Um, now we start with action <laughs> item A, consider analysis of cost of lab services finally on the agenda. Yes, I'll uh, give uh, a little bit of introduction and then uh, turn it over to Adam for any kind of final thoughts. So we reached out to four different labs. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that this was requested by Director Seaman. <laughs> Um, and it's a good, definitely a good thing to look at um, on a regular basis. Um, we reached out to four uh, labs that were within a 50 mile radius of the district's office. Um, SGS, CLS, Pace Analytical, and Alpha Analytical. Um, we received three responses of the four labs uh, that we reached out to. Uh, closest and cheapest is the CLS lab. Um, some of the labs, you can notice the different costs for the different tests. Um, a few of them come in a little bit lower, but on the whole, the, the tests that we perform most often um, do come in much cheaper with CLS. And <clears throat> I will um, note that SGS, while they did submit a quote, their quote was considerably late. Um, and I had to redevelop a staff report to include them um, as it took them over 15 days to get information to us. And Pace Analytical did not submit and of note any back tees, which is the most common test that we take here at the district, has to get all the way from the offices to Chico within four hours of the test. So a little bit of an untenable, uh, untenable uh, situation with them. So... The district's recommendation, staff recommends that the board of directors continue to confer with the evaluation of staff and work with CLS labs moving forward. Um, Adam, if you have any um, any color you'd like to add or we can turn it over to the board. Uh, yeah, I think the only thing I would add is that um, we've, had, we've had a good working relationship with sales for a long time. Um, and it works really well where it's, you know, it's working all almost any time. And usually you get um, um, their owners kind of like a, uh, mom and pop of labs um you, you actually talk to our owners their head lab director if there's a problem there's any kind of detection at all you know they call us on our cell phones so 
we have a really good working relationship. It works out well. Um, we did recently establish a new pickup location in Shingle Springs, which is helping us out quite a bit instead of going to Ranch or Cordova, mm-hmm. as long as we have a kind of a, a heads up, um, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. You know, our routine samples we can, but when we have a break or something, we we still have to get down to the lab. But I think that's all I really want to add. You know, I think maybe we have a good relationship with time and it's working out well. Adam? Would you say this is a twofer? You could say you get what you pay for, but we but are we also getting value at the same time? We're getting the best yeah. value at the best price? Yeah, I think you're getting really good value at a good price. Um, so I know, because I've worked with these other labs in the past. Um, I don't want to, you know, I mean, I, and I think, you know, I, working with CLS, I've, I've always had a good good experience, good back and forth, good good communication about, you know, what we're doing, and understand really what we're doing up here too, and that we're, how we're operating, so. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we did this. So now we, yeah, now it's on paper. You know, I, you know, I think I kind of knew going in what it was going to look like, but yeah, it's on paper, and that's good to have. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Any other board? Go ahead. Dr. I'd Paul. like to thank Don for bringing this up. It's quality assurance too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's always it's good. What needs to be done? Yeah. Let's be, let's I, check it out. Yeah. Go ahead, Director. Um, I did have a question, and it's kind of. Stepping back at seven board, there was a, a pH meter purchased. Is that for the uh, treatment plan or was it for one of your internal labs? Because you guys are pulling pH samples. Yeah, for the treatment plan, it's for. Uh, I mean, it's a portable con- one? Or- no, it, no, it's constant. We're a, it was a raw water meter where it constantly flows through the meter okay. and constantly right. reads it. So it had nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. All right. So that's, that's, all right, thank you. And, ju- and just one follow up. If this would have been the most expensive lab, 10% higher than the next highest, would you still recommend them? For the, with the working relationship, the efficiency, the. I, you know, I think um, it would have been a harder decision, but I think with how we can get samples to the lab and our working relationship, I think there's a good possibility we still would have recommended that. Yeah. Okay. These other ones, getting samples of those labs are actually complicated. It's not, <laughs> not nearly as simple as what we have now. Mm-hmm. The ones that don't grow, ones in Rockland, you know. Well, thanks for going through the process. Just go ahead, Don. Have you had any much percent of hours of um, full time being missed or anything like that? No, I don't think. The only time we missed the whole time is when we um, didn't get it to um, mm-hmm. the drop off point in time. Okay. And that was basically like operational. We we're trying to get the leak rope fixed and get it there sometimes. A late night or something like that. These call forms got short whole time. Right. Yeah. So, but we haven't. I don't, yeah, that four hours is tough. Yeah, I don't have a call. Or six hours, whatever it was. Well, it's a little longer with the presence absence. You have a little more time than that. That's uh, that the, the sh- for presence absent, yes. Um, okay. For the actual count, it's a shorter whole time. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I've never done this yeah. for short. So. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll now open this up to. Public comment. I see Cherie's hand raised. You have the floor, Cherie. Hi. Yes. How often do you drop off uh, lab work? At least once a week. Wow. Once a week. Okay. At, at a minimum. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, it's normally the, the well, yearly bill is eleven thousand dollars. So uh, we go through a lot of lab. Okay. Um, no other. Public comment. I'll close the public comment section. Um, so the recommendation is to status quo. I think it would be nice to have a motion from the board and a vote to just continue to work with CLS. I'll make a motion that we continue to work with CLS. Can I have a second? I'll second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor. Um, any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes mm-hmm. unanimously to continue on with CLS for lab services. Thank you, Director Seaman, <clears throat> for bringing this to our attention and following through with this with the board get this done. Sorry, and staff. Long. Okay. Um, action item 8B consider approval of extension of professional service agreement with E Corp in an amount not to exceed $225,000. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. This item is uh, a good item. It sounds like a lot of money, and it does sound like we're doing a lot more stuff, but this uh, with with the the money that we're bringing in for the outside projects and for the grant money, unfortunately, we do have to uh, do additional work. So this is to cover some additional 
uh, task work for the grants that we are applying for. Uh, these are some of the grants that we've been awarded. The majority of the money that we're asking for will be reimbursable underneath the grant programs. So this is a net, uh, there's not a net extra spend, extra expense under uh, any kind of budget. It's all part of the capital improvement plan. It's all part of stuff that we budgeted for underneath these various projects. It's just a kind of a, uh, we need authorization to spend more money. I can't authorize this large amount of money. We need it to come from the board to spend with any one particular consultant. Um, again, I'll turn it over to Adam if he has anything to add, um, but you can see in the discussion which projects um, and how much they each cost. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, to add to that, I don't know if there's not much more to add. That. You know, I kind of just outlined the projects we have been working on, um, where we're at with those. Um, the summary shows um, between reimbursable expenses, CIP uh, expenses, and operating mm -hmm. costs. Um, a small portion this does cover um, will go under operating rights, which I kind of mentioned about in in the paragraph about twelve thousand dollars, and that's just to get projects going. Then either they go towards the reimbursable grant money or or CIP project um, is every every project as like every single staff report we have a CEQA assessment. So the public utility we have to mm -hmm. follow those guidelines. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what their role is here at the district and keep projects moving forward. Cost money. Mm -hmm. uh, did you actually have six points to make or five as far as justification? I, I see tasks so, you know, is missing. So did you actually have yeah. just five? Yeah, so no task four actually. Um, I have we haven't um, actually issued the task order is for um, rehabilitating Otter Creek. Um, mm -hmm. A few years ago, a storm washed out our diversion pipe there, and we have to do the whole creek shifted. So we actually haven't executed that yet. So if we have a task force, we haven't executed and done any work on it. Yeah, not a typo, but not a typo. Plan it was planned. Yep. Thank you. Any uh, other board member comments? Questions, uh, Director Seaman. Um, I have been honored to have to go through one of their reports, and they do like to write novels instead of get <laughs> to the point and uh, give us information to read and move on. Um, I don't know if there's any way to talk to them about their report. Um, I have done a little research on them, and that's the way they like to write as fluff and not specific. So. Yeah, I think, you know, I think sometimes we're writing to an audience. Like, I know the, the one we did discuss was um, the Canal Line project. And, a lot of fluff. And, the, they, the, and actually the Bureau came back and asked for more. Well, no, I, so, I get, the, I get, I get the, the points so, they were trying to make, yeah. but to write for two points to write three or four pages was a little over the top. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I it was like they AI'd this thing and it went through and it did all this in sort of just words because they had to insert words. I think we have um, a, is it a three year contract? Yeah, well, there's, yeah. We can always work on efficiency. We can keep going, you know, make sure. Yeah, just, and, and if we and we keep seeing those those issues keep rising, you know. Oh, well, my, my, my comment was this, we're in year two of a three year contract. So, you know, if after the third year, we don't feel like they're serving our interests of, or they're fluffing and, and you know, spending more time than is needed, we can, we can, Re RFP for environmental services and right, and, but I'm just saying maybe at some point as we get them say if what we're looking for is something not so novelish, more sure. as an environmental document, mm -hmm. get specific, get to the point, let's move on. We can, we can because as they review them, it's just added money and cost for each document they throw at us. I totally agree with you. So I we could definitely have that discussion with them, and and I have like. Um, with all our contractors, it's always on their mind that we're a small district. We do not have profit books and get them so I'm always <laughs> off on our contractors for that kind of thing. You know, be efficient. Um, put your dollar to best use. Don't have 10 people on a meeting, you know. Right. Those kind of things. You say every time they're on a meeting, they tell you. Yeah. You know? I just like I said, after I read that one, I was like, mm -hmm. I never read such a, a cute little novel of when all we're doing is done I do. <laughs> Better than I'll tell him. Right, right. <laughs> and Mr. President, you do have an online yeah, yes. oh, sure. Uh 
open to public comment. Sheree, you have the floor. Um, of the 45,000 increase in the contract that you, it states that 12,000 is coming from the budget. Is that coming out of this year's budget or next year's budget? So it'll likely come from this year's budget. Uh, with the timing of the year, it also could come into next year's budget. So is it more than what was budgeted? It is not. It is, a lot of the projects, a lot of this gets shifted into the CIP projects as we uh, initiate those projects. So the budgeting in the CIP uh, accounts for this these pieces. We do have a small budget item for ECOR within the general operating budget, and that is because we do have some CEQA analysis, some smaller pieces that they um, that they do for us, but any of the big project work is all accounted for in capital improvement. <clears throat> right, I understand that, but it states that there's 12,000 coming out of the um, budget, the way I read it, and the other is coming out of the CIP, no? Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, thanks. You're welcome. Didn't answer. But... Thanks for your uh, commentary. Okay. Well, I did. So I still right, don't the understand. Com the comments over. We're yeah. Not get into back and forth. Yeah. Thank you, Sheree. Um, we'll now close the <clears throat> public comment period. Now the staff recommends that the board adopt the resolution authorizing the general manager to execute the PSA for E Corp for an amount not to exceed two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, or extend the agreement to two hundred twenty-five, not to exceed two hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Can I get a second, board member? Second. Second by Director Stovall. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously to extend the PSA E Corp for an amount not to exceed $225,000. Thank you. Okay. Action item C consider adoption of the 2024 water year declaration and projections. I'll turn that over to Nicholas, the general manager. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the one time every year we look at the irrigation season. We also look at the kind of what water year we're having. So as of right now, with the early spill in Stumpy, we're, we're assessing a normal water season, no restrictions on, on the water currently. Um, we did, uh, in the past, uh, a history of this district has been to start irrigation season on May 1st and on September 30th. We did have a little jog last year, uh, some due to the fire, some due, excuse me, some due to, uh, you know, kind of other factors. And that was uh, June 1st to October 30th. Um, we have uh, taken some consideration. We did receive numerous comments from the public at the irrigation committee meeting. We've been meeting about this for the past two irrigation uh, committee meetings. Um, their uh, recommended start was uh, May 15th. Uh, they are forwarding that recommendation onto the board. You can look at the analysis of, of what is in the staff report. Now, there is something of note that I will address. It is um, in uh, bullet two of recommended action. Um, uh, generally, we are assessing or assuming that if we start on May 15th as opposed to May 1st, there is a $700 in net storage supply differential. Take a foot. What did I say? Dollar. $700. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Slightly more Seven, than that. Uh, Freudian slip. 700 acre feet of, of differential. And the differential comes from when the dam has spill over the top. We, that is also diverting through the system. So we are assessing or assuming that there's potential that if we start a little bit later into the season, that 700 acre feet may have to come un from underneath the dam as opposed to going over the top. So uh, it's not free water at that point. It comes out of the storage capacity. So that is something of note that I want to address. And again, this is just an assessment. It's an assumption. 
we are not guaranteeing that at 700 acre feet. It could be less. I mean, there's almost four inches of snow outside. Yeah, it's still coming down. <laughs> so city boy. So city boy. I'm from Buffalo, New York. He got, he goes, <laughs> there's this much snow. He goes, oh, there's four inches of snow out there. And I go, oh, boy. There's this much snow. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So it so it may be you have to get the skids around. Uh, so so potentially seven hundred acre feet, three percent, two to four percent, somewhere in there. Potentially. And so we don't we we can't it, it's it's something that we model, but we can't be sure. Um, so I just want to make make sure that's of note. Um, I would like to turn it over to Adam because I know he has uh, maybe some additional information. If not, um, we can open it up to more questions, comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add to that. You know, uh, I, I think you know with the later rain, you know, he's always get as operators always try to find that construction window. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's you know a lot where I'm coming from, but I didn't get any vacancy water. I think we need to do May 15th. You start May 15th, stop October 15th. Dirk Stoma? Comment on um, it's not a page number, but it's a couple pages before the resolution. It talks about uh, meeting agenda 8C attachment 2. It identifies uh, losses several times in there. Um, these are losses that with time can be mitigated with pipelines and uh, correct a sealing the ditch, which will save that water, which can then be potentially I, transferred I, I, to I, other agencies. I would have been probably already saved thousands of acre feet with, so with, the, with the work that we've already done, and we are continuing to do more. So that provides the potential of thousands of acres of feet to be transferred. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Director Seaman. And one of the um, main concerns of coming out of irrigation was fire season. And that's why um, the, <clears throat> the uh, committee, as well as the comments that came through irrigation committee, uh, that was the big concern. Yeah, and I think this is a good, happy middle. Um, I know that there are some people who like the traditional May 1st. I know there's some people who like to, you know, kind of the jog to June 1st. Um, one of the things we noticed last year was at the end, people were shutting their water off and we had to reassess and redo things here in-house that, that was not cost effective for us. Um, and so I think May 15th is a good happy medium. Have you done an, like a um, analysis of uh, like what happened last year where um, this is the, you know, looking back at what happened last year, where we were trying to run it to um, October 30th, and we had the rains, and people were turning their water off when they still were supposed to leave it running, um, and you guys were having to have to spend all this extra manpower out there, and the extra cost that that manpower caused, um, and maybe have that as a historical to look back on. Yeah, I would say quantifying it in this meeting yeah. would be very difficult, but we could definitely put a number on it because um, I know that the, the guys had to continually adjust from, uh, I would say, October 15th right. to October 30th, and they were trying to ensure overflows were at a limit, to, to right. limited. Right, and that's, that's not something we want to be having at a, exactly. for our district personnel. I think to add to that, too, you know, when you have that last year, we, you know, we I think it's always been hesitated towards that later stop is because as soon as you get any kind of moisture, it doesn't, it doesn't dry out quick enough just to do any kind of work before actually winter season comes in. So like last year, we, we got lucky. We had an early dry November. We only get that pipe work done up there, but you could not, you know, the, so if you can find that medium where you have that extra couple of weeks, even a couple of weeks makes a difference before we're going into winter, but we can't access some of the, Access the system with you know heavy equipment where we need to do work. I understand that the public doesn't look at like that. I know, but I mean that's mm -hmm. that's why I understand you, <laughs> Nicholas. You say you're going to do a cost benefit analysis for the for future reference. We can. I, <laughs> and it may not be perfect, but we can definitely look at how much more response we had to put out there. We have cartographs, so it 
like I said, it's not going to be a perfect analysis, but we can definitely look at how much that is and kind of keep those in the back of our mind for, for next year and the years following. Thank you, Director Summer. Yep, so those are the, the balancing between the staff at the end of the year, fire season, and also the people that want to grow as well. Remember last year, we went the extra month and the last two month, two weeks started getting pretty hot and dry. So as you go past three weeks, it starts becoming iffy on both ends. So I kind of like that we got more input in through irrigation committee and that's what I wanted to see more from the irrigation uh, customers on when they wanted to go. So I give it the recommendation of uh, starting May 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, is it in for the what? That we need to check with the public. No public comment. I'll close it now for public comment. Now I'll open it for a motion. Thank you, just, uh, oh. just thank Mr. Scott since he's not here, but for all of his uh, input. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Scott, and for everyone else that's provided written, oral, comments. and uh, personalized uh, visitation of the board and the irrigation committee. Before you take your motion, Mr. Campbell, I just want to make sure that we don't forget you. If you do, if you haven't raised your hand, now would be the time if you have any comments you wanted to make. Right. Sorry, I'm multitasking here, listening to another meeting at the same time. So uh, I don't have any comments at, at present, but Perfect. can I? So what is the recommendation on the table? May 15th. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Well, thank you. <laughs> Tried to put it on the table. When you're on. <laughs> Go ahead now. I apologize for that. Uh, I make a motion that we start with May 15th and uh, October 15th. Second. Second by Director Saunders. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously to begin the water irrigation season on May 15th, ending October 15th. I have a comment to make before we move it to the next number. Okay. Um, one, could we, because we had such a confusion, can we email WaterSmart? What We're going to do a out? mailer <laughs> and, and an email. And, and get it out that at multiple times that this is your your water will be starting uh, irrigation water will be starting on this date uh mm -hmm. to remind them and remind them and remind them so we don't have what happened last year because it was really now, bad now that we have that set by you all we have that flyer that we developed and we're going to put in bold italics underlined flashy lights mm -hmm. yeah. that it starts may 15th and i would do that like you know the we call it robocall PSA, oh. whatever it is where they Robocall. Robocall, yeah, put it out. Sure. Something, you don't know, hit them in both, both fronts. You're not going to be, you know, you're, you're not, not going to be called anyway, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Is it so, just irrigation customers? Just yes. irrigation. We can, we can. <laughs> so it's, not shut it off. What? And not shut it off. Yes, and that was the other part. Yes, people for reminding yeah, me that. That'll also be part of the flyer that, as well. Well, but. And that robocall saying, you know, this is when it starts and you will are required to leave it 24 seven, disregard any, anything else you may have heard. It has to be running 24 seven. Thank you. Thank you. Action item D, consider approval PSA professional service agreement with Western Hydraulics in the amount not to exceed $172,000. And the uh, GM will now comment on that possible action. Yeah, so this is a um, company that we've been working with for several years. The number um, of $170,000 is a little bit, it's it's for multiple years of a contract. So this is, we're kind of extending a contract again. Um, so between 2021 and 2026, that will be the $170,000. So this isn't like, a huge increase in their budget. It's an extension of their contract. The reason that we're extending them is um, they, they're they aware uh, and have an intimate knowledge of our, our water system. And it would cost more to bring somebody in to do this work and train them to be new. Um, so what we're asking the board is to extend this to be a five-year contract um, and to add the additional um, two years the way they have theirs it's a little bit weird it's a calendar year contract um and that's just the way it was originally started based on June, january 1st it ends on december 31st so we are um 
trying to just have the extra two years added onto this contract. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Meyer is uh, part of Western Hydraulics. He's been doing this work for us for, for many years. He's done a number of different hydrologic work for us. Um, he's very good at what he does. And as I stated, he has kind of intimate knowledge of the district. I'll turn it over to Adam. I do see Jeff on the line if you have any questions for him. Um, but if Adam doesn't have anything to add, we can take any kind of uh, comments from uh, the board. Yeah, I think uh, I would just add you, um, Western Night Dogs have been doing our water rent reporting um, yeah. and are engaging for a number of years and they do a very good job. Um, and it could be, you know, we have to do it at state, as a state mandated mandated uh tasks we do um based on our water rights and our gauging and you know um they're able to do it in you know a lot of different adverse weather condition conditions um so that's why you know some of the costs is associated with that and we haven't had of all the all the annual reports we submit to the state we've never had a you know state come back and say you know this isn't accurate or anything like that so um yeah, we have a good work like good working relationship with them and um, they bring a lot of value to the district with their their knowledge of of the system, how it operates, and how how we operate. Yes. Um, let me start. This is the the company that uh, had our water sale information that they were supposed to be monitoring for us. Yes. Or no? Well, they yes, yes. They, but they okay. did. They did monitor. <laughs> okay, uh, and and we w we went out, but nobody else. Um, did we go out, or did we just reach we, back out to them? Because it reads that we did a sole source on this one, and it was the sole source was because of the knowledge that they had. We will at the end of this contract. We will before this contract ends. We will go back out to bid for for this in the future. So, is there anybody or? They are reading these 12 stream gauges and one uh, storage tank uh, that our guys aren't able to do. It's not that they're, we're not able to do it. It's that they are doing the reporting to the state along with the readings of the guys. So it's it's just not just as straightforward as reading the gauges. Well, it's to the tune of forty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's so it's actually going out and you know there, there there's a staff staff gauge out there. We read the staff gauge all the time, and that's reported mm -hmm. through our satellite system. So they so it actually um, they have a special certification to go out there and read the gauge. They adjust the rating curve, um, and that's part of the state requirement. That's done every single month on our water on our us handful of our water rights. Um, and for it, it really wouldn't be feasible for us to do that. The amount of the work it takes to go out to to go out there and do that and then process the data. So is anybody any of our guys going out? So, I mean, because as an end result, you know, Western Hydraulics won't be around forever. So, is any of our guys going out and learning these uh, this task? This is, that maybe we could do some of this in house. So this is like having like an engineer on staff. You'd have to have somebody with that professional license to do the submittal. That's why we hire them. So instead of having somebody on staff that we, I mean, we could pay for somebody to be on staff, but then they're, you know. Well, I'm talking about gathering the data because all the, because mainly you're you're having them with their license do the report, I think not the gathering of the data. I think he has to, they have to verify the data. You know, they, they unfortunately won't take our word for it. <laughs> I mean, we, we could, we could okay. do it, but it's, it's not. Yeah, I mean, we, we, do, we do the same kind of things with our small staff gauges down here. Right, right. You know, we, there's there's multiple of them. Um, it's more of a uh, robust rating curve they have that we that we use down here because it, you know we're looking at our individual staff gauges internally, but these are going out to the state, and there's there's more of a scrutiny on, on these ones. Hmm. That's a good what if question because if then you know it's a good question. Director Saunders. And especially with the upcoming um, legislation that are floating around there as well. Well, we have to make sure we keep sending in our reports for our water rights and diversions and the stuff. That's probably one of the most important reports that we have for the business. Mm -hmm. Make sure we keep our water and the ability to argue diversions when they try to divert water from us during uh, 
shortage times when we have water. So this is a big component. The other thing I wanted to add is we did add another uh, company that's doing our doing water and water transfers and things like that. So it's just not uh, Western yeah. Hydraulics. Western Hydraulics will not be handling any water transfer reporting in the future. It will be, it will rotates to our water transfer yeah. consultant who we also hired. Yeah, so we did switch that and we did put in a robust uh, water policy that goes into the public uh, public transparency and making sure we have the, all the reporting beforehand for the requirements that we have to do with state water resource control board and we're already started putting in the things that makes it more beneficial to our <laughs> so we learn from the past so we're not in a in perpetuity uh requirement to owe our water so all of that stuff that we've learned from the past we've uh collected and hopefully will will be will be seen in the future so uh i'm in favor of this part dealing with the diversions and permitting and stuff and uh western hydraulics has been doing a good job with this since they've been with the district thank you is mr meyer supposed to he's welcome to resource to, uh, if, if you have any questions for him and you're welcome to ask um, i think he's here just to, to um ask answer any questions you may have mm -hmm. At this point, I'd love, like to open it well, up to the public. Yeah, I'm sure you had her hand raised. Yeah. I'm not sure if uh, you still have a question. We <laughs> uh, I'll give you a chance, Mr. Dow. I got a question for Mr. Myers. Was he involved with the water transfer? He was four years ago. He was, but he was a, a from reporting standing standpoint only. So we had a little misinterpretation on the. Payback of the yeah, that, water that, transfer. I would say that was yeah. not Mr. Meyer's yeah, doing. Mr. Meyer. just, did we not the payback the, portion of it? No, though. we didn't get the right. We didn't have the full information. Yeah. You didn't ask the right questions. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're we've corrected that. We, yeah, we're, we're, we're on we're on it. Those mistakes. Why yeah. we have a policy now? Yeah, we're on it like white on rice. We have a, a policy and a whole new consultant who's going to be doing that. Yeah. yeah, good question. Yeah, and okay, I'm the thank you, memory. Yeah, we're here. Okay. Yeah. Closing public comment. Uh, now I'll open it up for a board to make a motion on the PSA with Western. I make the motion to uh, approve the professional service agreement with Western Hydrology. In an amount not to exceed one hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. One seventy-two or one sixty-nine three hundred five. One seventy-two. Well, thank you. In our resolution, it says one seventy-two. It's one seventy-two. Oh. Okay. Okay. There's recommended action. Okay. And can I get a second? Second. Second by Director Stovo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Five to zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chef. Um, we're now on item E. Consider authorizing PSA with Bennett Engineering for Upper Canal, utilizing USDA grant award in amount not to exceed seven hundred ninety-five thousand, and uh, possible action for Nicholas to. Comment. And before before uh, we get started, that seven eighty five is actually six seventy five. Yeah, okay. we uh, we had a, a change. So in the staff yeah. report is six seventy five. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we make note of that like six seventy five, not the seven ninety five. Yeah. Um, I do see Mr. Harden has walked in the door, so I'm going to try to give him a, a, a little introduction. If you have any questions for Mr. Harden, he is our uh, district engineer. This work, much like the e -core, um you just uh, 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 heard, is again as part of the having additional work because of additional projects and additional grant funding. It costs additional money to have the engineer do the work to develop these projects. Um, this, if you continue to work into, you see all the task orders for all of the uh the work not everything in here is is part of those projects 
but uh, a majority of the new work that we're asking for is for the USDA grant that we're getting. And um, much of that is reimbursable through those grant programs. So that grant is $8.8 .8 million. And we will be able to submit all of the engineering work into that grant program. So it's not going to cost us in the long run. It's going to give us, again, the authorization. I'm not allowed to sign for this much money, but it's you as a district authorizing us as staff to work with Mr. Hardin so that we could submit this work to the state, or excuse me, the federal government for reimbursement once we get the grant. So I, uh, I'll turn it over to Adam if he has anything to add. And then uh, again, Mr. Hardin is in the room if you want to um, ask him any questions. How did he time it that well? <laughs> I believe he was outside. <laughs> Okay. I, Adam texted me. He's like, uh, you head this direction. I live an hour away. So, I, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so I think uh, similar to the E-Corp um, staff report, this one kind of goes over what work we have done, where we're at on those those various tasks. Um, and it cover, covers the anticipated expenditures, expenditures moving forward. And you'll see like most of it when Nick was covering um, was the USDA project um, and moving forward in that project. So under task, <clears throat> as we already have developed task order, task order eight, that was to get the application going um, to get that, to get us to that, to the front door for that money. Um, you know, we're 95% there as we discussed before. Um, so that this is to have start that work um, now, um, and really what that, the major factor to that is, um, every time you do like construction projects, but it's not every time, but if you do a bare construction project like this, you, you have to have like survey data and we have a, you have a window here. We can, you know, have, have, uh, get this, get this project going. We can actually get our whole canal system aerial survey before, before season starts. Um, so we can have that data, have everything in the process. Now to be ready to go, like shovel ready in the fall to actually start this project. And that's kind of a, a critical step. And that's why we're moving forward this, with this right now. Um, so a big part of that is the USDA project that will, like Nick mentioned, all reimbursable. Um, the rest of it is um, projects we have ongoing now, you know, which would be um, future treated waterline replacement projects, which is um, CA pro CIP projects, any kind of canal um more robust kind of like Otter Creek rehabilitation, those kind of projects, like um, tank landing kind of project. Those are all CIP. And then we did put um, some extra funds in there for um, the daily kind of go back and forth before we get, sometimes before we get those project developed, we have a question, we have to answer, we have to join for something. And we do have a, uh, some some of that funds will come out of operating budget. Um, but yeah, I know it's a, it's a big number, but you know, this is like we discussed during the E-Corp one, and this is how this is how we move forward a lot of these projects. And we have to get get them done, get them in place, and keep the construction going on to not only meet grant requirements, but meet other requirements, like once we, you know, once we see the castle report, um, meet different deficiencies that we have within the district. And this is how how we do that, how how we're ready to move forward and anticipate um problems we problems that may be coming down the road. That's all I have to add to it. Then we get at least one question for his justifi justified eight hour drive here. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. How long, how long have you been with the district? <laughs> uh, we started in August 2022. So, yeah, coming up on what, a year and seven months or something like that. Yeah. As, as a uh, the district. As, as the, the district yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then how long have you been working with the district? 2017, I think we started yeah. um, with the Auburn Lake Trails. There was a notice violation for some um, high flows. And then we did a whole report with, you know, um, capacity analysis and kind of come back a couple of times and help with some waterline projects and canal lining projects. So, um, yeah, been on, been on for quite a while now. We know the district pretty well. Director mm -hmm. Stovall. Underneath the fiscal impact on page three of three, it says that there's uh, approximately $16,000 that the district will cover for um, $675,000. And then you mentioned that this also feeds into an $8.8 .8 million 
Yeah, so grant. So the six this is a hell of an investment, man. Yeah, so just, just, yeah, just right on as a district. <laughs> we are headed down the right road. And yeah. I appreciate the quality that you bring to make this potential become a real. I'll, I'll give Dave a quick shout out. I, I was working on some other stuff, and Dave gave me some some stuff like over the weekend. He was calling me like Saturday. <laughs> Like I was like Dave, don't call me on Saturday night. <laughs> but I really appreciate how he works for this district. You know, he, he definitely um, gives us his all, and uh, he's he's been great for us. Thank you. Thank you. I want to mention too the federal federal appropriations tank. You have a tank expert on on staff. We do. We do have a tank expert on staff. And just reached out to Adam yeah. today or yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. You, you got a tunnel man. Yeah, sure. yeah, we've asked. <laughs> uh, I am tunneling. I do have a project we're tunneling underneath the uh, the Feather River right now. So I do have a mm -hmm. consultant that does like micro tunneling. So it's not. I'm I'm working with them. They're actually called Bennett Trenchless Engineering, which is ironic. <laughs> um, no relation at all. But um, huh. yeah, they uh, we work with we worked with them on a couple of projects. Okay. They do trenchless design, and so. Mm. Um, yeah, we, I've got some experience with it. Okay. We're taking volunteers to go through the tunnel. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> Bring a canary. All right, done. Is there a minimum? Yeah, like, we'll, 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 we'll be in touch. Yeah. 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 Is, there a raft? is there a minimum? A raft? Okay. Yeah, headline. <laughs> Helmet, maybe? Yeah, I know. You got to. I, I did so rafting so. school, too, so <laughs> can't, guy. can't just be a good videographer. <laughs> yeah. Send the drone. Send the drone. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure at this point you'd have to be I'm certified to be a videographer in the yeah, tunnel. Small. Okay. We do have one comment online, Mr. President. Yes. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Any more please, please take the board back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it goes along the same as what, what Bob was saying is that, I mean, this this other funding sources are guaranteed. Or we're not going to be so right. right. All right. I'll just double check it. <clears throat> All right, thanks. That's All right. it. Thank you, Director Thornbrook. Any more from the board comment? Okay, I'll now open it up for public comment. Sure, you have the floor once again. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Copy. Hello. Okay. You have the floor. Can, how how is, okay. How is it um, legal or policy wise that you can over um, increase a contract more than double and extend it out? and not go out for a uh, bid? They're a staff contracted engineer. They they, they did go out to bid, right? Ooh. We, we, and we did go out to yeah. bid originally, but technically much like our attorney, they are on staff with us, but they don't come into the office as, as generally. I would just say there's no legal requirement that an amendment to a contract has to go out. I mean, especially if they are serving as your contracted district engineer, um to serve as CIP projects, that amount is gonna go up over time. It has to go up necessarily. All right. Thank you, Cherie. I'll no close for public comment period. There's no more questions from yes, anybody but, for anybody. Well, we've, uh, we've been working with him since I've been on the board on uh We've been uh Bennett's been putting in all the project descriptions and that's been helping us get all the large grants we have. They helped us with the first IRWM caddy when we got the first grant from the state to do the canal lining. So uh they've been a pretty good um company for the district, and that's we're glad that we're able to have them as our district engineer. And I don't know if anybody remembers the meeting where we had him in with uh talking about transparency, and he says, Nope, you don't want me for this. <laughs> so uh He's very transparent, and uh, we are very trustful of this company, and uh, oh, our CIP projects will be in good hands with them. Okay. So with that, would you then make a motion to commit so public funding resources? Well, I'll make a motion to uh, commit extending uh, our district engineer, Bennett, for the upper canal utilization for the grant award in an amount not to exceed $675,000. So second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously. You can stay. Six hundred seven. You're welcome to stay. He drove an hour. It's snowing outside. So it is snowing outside more than I thought it was going to. Okay. Help me out for a bit. All right.
Moving right along to item F, consider amendment to proposal professional service agreement with LSL and amount not to exceed $160,000. Possible action to be defined by Nicholas. Yeah, so this is uh, LSL serves as our CPA. They are working with Jessica on a daily basis to uh, ensure that the the accounts and uh, the numbers are correct. Uh, the reason for the change in contract is we originally had this amend or had this budgeted for eighty thousand dollars. <throat> when we went back and looked at their uh, their service contract, that was to serve for six months with the district. Um, and so when we went back in uh, to budget because they started at the end of 22, um, or I guess 22, 23, and then 23, 24, um, we put in into the budget $80,000. Unfortunately, that wasn't um, enough uh, to, to sustain them through the year. They rebid for the full year, and so we were able to see that it was actually 160,000, not 80,000, and so that's why there's been some questions from the public, there's been some questions from the board, and so we're trying to rectify the the original contract. It was a six month for a six month time window, and and now we're trying to get the full contract for the one year time window. So that's where the hundred and sixty thousand dollars come from. Rectify and clarify. Yeah, that is correct. So I'll turn it over to Jessica. She's more than welcome to add any color to this. Um, if you have any questions for myself or Jessica, um, after that. Director Thornburg. Well, I got a question. It seems to me that would have affected when we put this up for bids and we were looking at the various CPA firms to do this. Was that overlooked at that time? And that no. Firm selected them? No, it was they they were all selected based on the same criteria. This is right before I started. And so No, this was right before I started. Yeah, and and so it's kind of we're trying to everything was bid based on the same criteria. So everything was should have been should have been anal an analyzed based on the same criteria. Um, again, this is one of those things where we're coming up on that three-year time window. We can always go back out to bid again to see how that is. But I think changing at this present time would not be something uh, advantageous for the district. Um, and moving forward, this $160,000 will be kind of their fee that they're going to use every year. So originally, I guess, when this was first bid, it was maybe not analyzed correctly. And then when Jessica and I started looking at things, we tried to, to figure out what was going wrong and we determined it was that they only had bid for a six month time window. So that add some color to that. Please. Okay, so when I went, cause this was, I think my first board meeting ever in my life. Um, <laughs> my understanding was that the board was not satisfied with the duties of I Bailey. And so they wanted to go out to RFP for new CPA services, services and knew that LSL would be bidding for it as our previous auditor. They were the ones that caught all the errors that that CPA services was mm. creating. The only RFPs that came back were for I Bailey, from I Bailey and from LSL, and they were comparable. And their I Bailey was around $157,000. And at that time, because I wasn't here for the previous, I was only here when you voted. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that they needed to take over right away. And that was March of 2021, 22, March of 2022. So when, when it was voted that LSL would be taking over CPA services, that's when we put the RFP out for an auditor and we didn't get one until this last fiscal year. And that's why the audit was late. So LSL took over CPA services from March through the end of the year and then to finalize the end of your financial statements to get them ready for an auditor. This contract should have been amended at that time. So I went back to look for the RFPs. They're, they're out in the pod. We They're there somewhere. But the information was on the staff report from March 2022. And I Bailey did come in comparable to $160,000. That's what they projected it would cost for a year's worth of CPA services. And that's what they were charging also. So this number we just got from the original bidding, but we never 
we never renegotiated their contract after they were done taking over that responsibility to finish out that fiscal year. So that's why we're doing it now. And that's why then I, I didn't even know that that was the case when I was here. And then they were just our CPAs and it just went under the radar. So this is just fixing a mistake that happened in July of 2022 for the 22-23 fiscal year. We should have gone back and redone their contract for continuation of services, not just to finish the year, the previous fiscal year. It's the only bid. The only bid. It was I Bailey and LSL were the only ones that submitted bids. In two years, it has gone up. Okay. It's been maintaining the same amount. The only reason why we're over this year is because they performed two audits in one fiscal year. Thank you. Director Thornburg. I've heard somewhere where I don't I don't remember if it was your your CPA firm or if it was the auditor firm. You've only had them for five years. The the auditor. 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 Okay. So they were at the end of their term anyway, because they were our auditors CPA. for four years. Okay. Yeah, you have to you have to use them every three years. I think it's five, I thought, for auditors. Three to five. Yeah, so it's, yeah five. some people just change it three. You can go back after a one or two year lag, but you have to you have to have somebody else look in between. So. Yeah, I think our current auditor contract says three years with the option of four. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> Any other board member? Yes, the other thing to add, is, if you remember, is uh, we were also having the issue where we had the staff transition and Tyler was the problem and LSL had the... Uh, People on their staff that were expert with Tyler as well. Told they're the ones that have fixed Tyler. Yes. Okay. Um, or I should say, completed the implementation. Completed the implementation. That is, yes. I mean, we just now build the module for the bank reconciliations. We were doing it all by hand. Thank you. Any other board members? No. I'll now open this up to public comment. I see no hands. For sure. She's on the right now. Hi. On the right. I'm no hey. I'm there. But not with a hand up. Would you like to uh Your hand broke? Well, now it is. <laughs> now it is. There you go, Sheree. You got the floor again. Okay. I'm actually looking at the RFP from uh, March 2022. It says a one-year contract is contemplated, subject to the annual review and recommendation of the GM or office manager. That's what I just so said. So I don't understand where the six months uh came in. The proposal that was submitted. You can. I'm re I read that directly from that. And then I also have other comments. Go ahead. Go on with your other comments. Thanks. Okay. As of 2-9-24, LSL's billings are now at 180000 for the first seven months of this fiscal year, with a budget of only 80000 with five months to go in this fiscal year, the billings will probably hit 220 with normal monthly billings. And there still isn't a budget amendment for that full amount. I've addressed this in the past. I don't think I need to address this anymore. We will make a budget amendment when is when it is closer to the end of the budget year. Okay. Noted. Thank you, Shri. Any more comments? Sure. Do you have to make another? No, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Sheree, for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> now we'll close the public comment period and open it back up to the board for a motion. I guess we have to correct this because the 80000 was uh, why we kept looking like we were under budget when yeah. it should have been 160 And we know the we had the two... Um, the two audits this year was what pushed it over the 160 and just that I know the treasurer would like to see uh, some more detailed reports for it. I mean, uh, our CPA should give us a report sure. that we can, uh, we can see it. So um, I'll make a motion that we uh, correct this and have the PSA now to not exceed $160,000 for each fiscal year from 2023 to 25. May I get a second from the board member? Second. Second by Director Thornborough. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously, tied to zero. Okay. Item G. Consider adoption of amended policy 2225 financial reserve. 
possible action to accept the amended policy for financial reserve. Nicholas? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, this is uh, to adopt the MOU with Local 39. <clears throat> inside the one before. Oh, sorry. Oh, financial reserve. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to hit one I apologize. I apologize. I don't know what to mention. G. Yeah, I got G. Okay, sorry. So this is a new policy. So every new policy we bring to full board for action uh, as an action item, as opposed to a consent calendar item. So um, it's huh? an amended policy. An amended. Oh, okay, excuse me. When we amend with great veracity, <laughs> yeah. we bring to the full board. And bigger. So this one is amended enough that we wanted to bring it to the full board for comment. Um, what we're doing with this one is um, codifying the reserve policy of 120 days of operating expenses to be held in reserve to ensure that the district is solvent at all times. Um, so I, I this is a policy committee um, recommendation to the board. I can um, you know continue to talk or I can allow Mr. Saunders or Ms. Seaman to uh, chime in with the added language that we have there. Dr. Seaman? Any chiming on your end? I think it says everything we need to have said. I'll just add, every time we do the funders get something for they always give us the option 90, 120, 180. So this codified, this is our policy. It has to be 120. Every time that comes up, it's like we have to change our policy if we ever change the, mm -hmm. the amount. So this kind of codifies this mm -hmm. is what we do unless we change the policy. Mm -hmm. And your board. Question for Mr. Thurber. And I like that it spells out that the fund transfer is authorized by the board. That was an issue. Yes. No hocus pocus. <laughs> by the board. Thank you. That's fantastic. No hocus pocus. Yes. If there's no other director comment, I'll open it up to the public forum. I don't see Open. hands raised online. Okay. I'm going to now close this with public comment and open it up to a board member to make a motion. I make a motion to uh, amend the reserve policy as stated. Second from board member. I'll second. Seconded by Director Saunders. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously, unanimously to pass the amended policy the financial reserve. Thank you. The, oh. bigger, the vigorously amended policy. The vigorously, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now on to item H, one we've all been waiting for. Consider adoption of memorandum of understanding with the International Union of Operating Engineers, Stationary Engineers, Local 39. Possible action to adopt the policy with the public employees, Local 39. Okay, so now I'm, I'm on the right one, and I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> so we are here to uh, adopt the Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, with Local 39. This would uh, be for all of the operators and outside staff with the district. Oh. Within the staff report, I did include some uh, financial calculations of how this will affect the district over the next five years. Um, you'll notice that in the first three years, there is a salary increase for the employees. Um, they also requested a boots and pants increase of $100 per employee. Um, and then a, another uh, increase is a standby pay. Now, this is an estimated um, uh, standby pay at $21,710 in the increase. Um, over the year. I also included some costs for the floating holidays that we'll be adding into the MOU at a cost to uh, of approximately $9,975. And then we also have an extra holiday that um, is being added into the MOU and that is at a cost of approximately $5,000 round number. Now those two last ones are offset costs. They are not going to generally cost the district anymore, but it is a uh, uh, something that the district will absorb as a loss in, in potential uh, something that they're not getting anymore. But uh, 
so generally not, like I said, not any additional budget, but something where we will have less time with them here at the office. Um, <clears throat> we've had several um, closed session meetings in regards to this. Um, if you have any additional questions, I would uh, be happy to take them. I staff recommends that the district board of directors adopt the attached resolution approving the MOU with the International Union of Operating Engineers, uh, local number 39. Please. I would like someone at some point perhaps to explain the in defense of the ratepayer, the union, and the staff, and kind of tie it all in, in together, the effort that was made by this board in the best interest of the community to do the best thing they can to be transparent and accountable with the decisions that we make based on the data that we have. It was it was tough. It was tough. And uh, I hope the public can appreciate all the effort that was put in uh, to come to the decision that we're about to make. So if you have questions from the public later, but I'm going to open it up to the board now. So, Mr. Thornburg, I would like to make a statement. The following is my opinion, which is the basis for the position I'm going to take with this agenda item and this MOU. I apologize for having to read this prepared statement to all of you, but I'm old and this will help me keep my train of thought more focused and the time it takes a lot shorter. First of all, this MOU is only one of two MOUs that we are currently negotiating. The cost stated for this MOU is for Local 39 only. It does not include the cost for Local 1, which is currently intended to be presented to all of you later. Secondly, as most of us know, several decades ago, the voters in our state passed Prop 218. Prop 218 is currently state law, and it comes with requirements that must be followed by any agency, such as our water district, before a rate increase can be implemented. One of the requirements is that our district must disclose to the public what the revenue from the rate increase will be used for, and the district cannot use that revenue for something other than what it was disclosed to the public. And the main benefit of Prop 218 is that the ratepayers, or more accurately, our customers, can protest and actually refuse a rate increase if they don't agree with what the rate increase revenue is going to be used for, hence the disclosure requirement. The main focus of the last Prop 218 rate increase implemented in 2018 that was very strongly emphasized was the lack of funds to maintain, repair, or replace the district's aging infrastructure including vehicles and supporting equipment. Also, the board stated that because our rates had not been raised for a long time, cost of service had risen to the point of jeopardizing continued operation of the district. However, during the process of that 218 and the many obvious irregularities that were observed, many concerns were expressed by many customers. And in fact, so many customers protested the rate increase that it came very, very close to being defeated. Almost half of all the customers of our water district protested that increase, but it survived and was implemented. My point being, the cost incurred for both of these MOUs, which is very significant, was not calculated or projected or disclosed as part of the cost of service used as justification for the last rate increase. And therefore, none of the revenue proceeds from that rate increase can be used to fund either of these two new MOUs, no matter how much revenue we receive. And to do so would not only require diverting and utilizing funds that were previously designated to be put, be put towards CIP, but more importantly, it will intentionally circumvent our customers' right under the law to a degree to agree or disagree with this use of their funding. As pretty much everyone knows, Cost for everything has climbed an insane amount during the past few years. So naturally our cost of service is also and continues to climb. So we are currently working on another Prop 218 rate increase, which is a continuing process that occurs every five years in pretty much all water districts and is unfortunately now a way of life. It is my position that due to the significant cost of both these MOUs, they should be part of the upcoming Prop 218 and fully disclosed as such, therefore properly and legally allowing all customers to exercise their right under state law to weigh in <clears throat> on this use of their funding. Now, since I was elected to this seat, a few of my so-called friends 
have insulted me by calling me a politician. I am not, nor will I ever be, a politician in that, unlike typical politicians, I mean everything I say during my election campaign. And I will always adhere to the statements and promises I made during my campaign. During my campaign, I promised that I would ensure our board operates with total honesty, integrity, accountability, and especially transparency. Contrary to what I have witnessed from our past boards, our current board is actually doing all of that. In fact, I'm actually proud to be part of this board and very pleased with the performance and attitude of every member of our current board. Though occasionally we may butt heads with varying opinions, that's the way it should be and actually needs to be. And this just might be another one of those times. <clears throat> though, now, though I have a couple of issues with this particular MOU, the main issue I have is that it is not proposed to be funded in a manner that I consider to be legal under Prop 218. In fact, at the very least, it doesn't even follow Prop 218's purpose and intent of providing a binding choice for the customers or whether or not their water rates should be used for this increased compensation package, and here's why. The amount of any rate increase is determined by calculating the actual cost of service, which includes employee compensation increases per the current MOUs and projected increases should an existing MOU expire during the five-year term of the Prop 218 increase. This MOU is way above and beyond any previous projections and is at a level that should be part of a disclosure made for use of revenue for any Prop 218 rate increases. And since it was not figured in or disclosed to the customers under the last rate increase, revenue from that rate increase cannot be used to fund either of these two new MOUs. The goals stated to the public by the board at the time for the 2018 rate increase were to cover cost of service and to put $1 million per year into capital improvement projects or CIP. At the end of the first year of the rate increase, the annual audit showed that we way exceeded having the ability to accomplish those goals. So much so that the board at the time surprisingly chose to freeze the next year's scheduled rate increase since it was not needed to continue achieving the stated goals of the rate increase. The next year's audit showed the same result. So the next scheduled annual rate increase was also frozen. I believe it was the next year where there was a delay in receiving the annual audit, so the board decided to issue a temporary six-month freeze on the annual increase pending the receipt of the audit. When the audit continued to be delayed, the temporary freeze lapsed and the rates were increased by 5% for treated water customers. And once the audit was finally received, annual rate increases were once again frozen. So during the duration of the five-year Prop 218 increase schedule, Rates only went up a total of 5% above the initial increase instead of the 20% plan. <clears throat> every single one of us affiliated with our water district, including every single employee, every manager, and every board member, has a job to do. And right now, by taking the position I am, I am not only doing the job I was elected by our community to do, but also I'm doing the job my required training which came directly from our state's Fair Political Practices Commission, says each of our board members must do. The bottom line is that this MOU, as well as the other MOU, must be included and disclosed as part of the upcoming Prop 218 rate increase and pass before we can consider approving either of the new MOUs. These MOUs represent a significant benefit to all of our employees, and as such, I would think there shouldn't be any objection to doing it properly and by the book, and simply waiting for a few months for these MOUs to be approved. And I haven't heard one single legitimate reason why this MOU has to be approved today. And furthermore, I think that both MOUs should be approved at the same time, so the board, our customers, and the public will know the total cost for these compensation increases we're all employees in the district. All of this being said, my position with this agenda item is that I will not support approving, approving this MOU at this time. I am, however, open to agreeing to both MOUs being contingent on the passage and implementation of this next Prop 218 rate increase. And in the event that successful implementation of the next this next rate increase occurs beyond July 1, I would further be open to making all provisions in the MOU retroactive to July 1. 
And finally, I sincerely hope that every other board member here will also do their job for which they were elected to do and required to do. And to two particular members here, I hope you also fulfill your similar campaign promises that I have personally witnessed you making. Thank you. Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> well said. All right, well said. Good. Well said. Thank you, Dr. Thornbill. Uh, any other director comment regarding the subject? Yes, I understand uh, Director Thornborough's statement, and it just happened to coincide with a year where our rate study is. So if the labor negotiations happened with, we didn't have all the staff changes and all the GM changes, it would have been completed last year. So we wouldn't even have been in this situation, but we're here. And uh, the one thing that we've made sure to do was provide all of the data. So we did our due diligence on our part as a board. We did our rate survey, our salary survey, and uh, the salary survey and data shows that we are trying to uh, bring us closer to median for everybody in the surrounding uh, agencies that we survey. And this will, approving the MOU, will give us the exact amount of salaries that we will put forward when it does come to a rate study. So we will know the exact salary, the exact increases, so there won't be any guesstimations in it. So those are the two ways to go. You can either do it after the fact or do it before the fact. So that's where we are. We have an MOU, which will give us the exact amount of salaries for the next five years. So we have that information. Is it exact or is it? No, it'll be exact. We have, I mean, if, once we approve the contract, right. that gives us the exact salary and that will go directly into a rate study. Mm -hmm. So okay. the public will have the exact mm -hmm. numbers moving forward. Okay. And then the director on uh, that same subject. A comment. Um, I think because the 218 and this are coming up, close to the same time. I can understand the relevance as far as working with other water districts. They may be separated by years. Then I don't know that there's, I don't see the requirement externally to have one dependent on the other, but I understand what you're saying and don't support it. Derek Andrew and Stephen. Well, I'll take you down the other path then. Um, I'm still having a problem with this contract starting, let's see it being starting December 1st, 2023, um, and how the stance from the union is that it has to run from that. Um, you know, the contract, uh, we're trying to clean it. We're trying to make it where... Um, both parties are um, don't have that wavering down in front. Well, I, I want to just nope. when you're done, I'll address that. Yeah. So anyway, um, this is one of those things where I'm sorry. Uh, it needs to be clean and clear because if you read through it, if the bargaining unit reads through it, it reads confusing. I mean, I have to read through each section to see what gets implemented when and then if you read it wrong it sounds like well it's a December 1st date when you know I don't know if it's the union trying to make them clean and clear you know so they don't look like they've done anything wrong to the bargaining you know to this bargaining unit. I don't know um, but there's also you know I've, I've read through it I don't know how many times now and I've found another error or miss point that we didn't address. So I'm having a hard point, a hard time going back through this thing. Um, I don't have a problem with like 90% of this contract, but some of this has to be worked through. And we have been trying to uh, make it for the best for our employees. Um, but I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not backing it. Mr. President, I'll, I'll I 
I, I want to just address her comment because I did speak to the union business agent and, and I'll explain to what he told me the reason for the December 1st. Um, the, the union said the reason they wanted to go back to December 1st is if there is some investigation into the future with some employee and, and we find they needed to be disciplined between December 1st and today's date, anytime in there, they don't want there to be any ambiguity of that they were never under a contract. So, so say on uh, January 15th, I'm going to pick on Marty just because he's in the room. Marty did something wrong. Marty's great. He doesn't ever do anything wrong. Um, <clears throat> there, there could be an argument or a legal ambiguity that he was not under contract if we go with today's date. So that was their stance on that. And then just to further clarify, there is language inside the contract, in, excuse me, inside the, the MOU that states that the standby pay will begin the first pay period following this approval and the floating holiday will be able to be used up until June 30th from basically tomorrow until June 30th and if they do not use it by June 30th, it is lost. But if you read section 1.3, if you're reading this through and trying to go, <clears throat> trying to do this, um, it, you know, there's, there's this conflict. So I would say if that's the case, that that union uh, should be giving a letter that attaches to this that and an agreement separate so that this contract runs from June to July, but we do the other part um, with the April 4 thing, but not the way it's written. It's very confusing. And then I also ran into a spot where I think you didn't take into account or we missed it that we're giving um, under the bereavement leave, it's not clarified where it was under the previous um, it, it's, MOU. It's an update to state law. I have to give five days. At a sick leave or leave? It is leave. It is, a it state. is not outlined in here of what exactly it is. If it, it's it, administrative leave it's or administrative if it's, leave. If they have five days to utilize within 90 days past of, of the death. Right. Okay. So this is what I'm saying is we have not had the opportunity to really get this clarified. We keep hearing the same stories over and over uh, where now all of a sudden we're at the 11th hour and we have to make a decision. But I, like in my case, this December 1st is like it was a big flag because why do we have to have something that's not really having to be there? Contracts extend. Um, and you fall under the previous contract until a new contract is administered. Not that we backdate a contract. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I, don't know, I don't know who to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'll just respond to that. So my position would be, I understand the union's position. My position would be the LOU continues in effect after the expiration period until there's a new contract. Okay. So I think it's a little bit their prerogative to take it in a position out of an abundance of caution in case there's any ambiguity. It's their prerogative to do that. I'm just saying my position would be the contract will remain on the same terms until there's a new contract. So in that period of time, the retro date isn't needed. But the, the union has the right to to want to make that abundantly clear. And that was that's the position they've taken bargaining wise. As it relates to the dates in the MOU. If it's unclear, you can blame that on me, but I think it's very clear, and I'll tell you why. Section 1.3 or 1.4 says specifically, and I, I wrote in there intentionally, unless otherwise stated herein, the date of this will be December 1, 2023. And then there are, and then you go to section ID 2.4.2, when we're talking about the on call pay, I believe, or the standby pay, it specifically says the first full period. A period after April 4th. 
So that would be consistent with 1.3 or 1.4 that says unless otherwise stated herein. So essentially what you're doing is you're reading the MOU as effectively globally saying it starts December 1, 2023. But then as you get the specific sections that have a different date, it's not inconsistent at all because that prior section said it's going to be December 1st unless you see somewhere where it says otherwise. And so we've specifically taken this <clears throat> pains to specify otherwise. So I just wanted to respond on that piece. And that's a pretty standard way to write up uh, things like that, because it's rat, it's easier to do that than in every section say, this would be effective December 1, December 1, December 1. It's better just to have one omnibus section and then carve out otherwise later. Okay. I, At least that was the intent. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we don't get too far ahead. Director Seaman, Vice President Seaman brought up two points. Did we answer her question satisfactorily? Can we meet her need to move forward legally and contractually and clear and with clarity? Yeah, we, we, there are two things she said so far. How are we on that? I heard the other thing was the breathing leave question. I think you put in as a cost now, whether it's a state requirement or no, or wasn't. I, I, it's a change of contract. It, it it is. It was discussed as one of the updates that we submitted it? to uh, to the to you all as the board. Um, yeah, I did not include that as a cost, and I that's an oversight on my. I one more thing. I uh, okay. I apologize. Um, I I didn't include it because we don't we can't. I can't change that based on uh, anything that we say. It is it is strictly a state law. So that was. Um, legal counsel's input into the MOU. There's a typo that needs to be cleaned up. With the there's, a few, there's a few Which, typos. No, no. This yeah. is the big one. The March 7th date on the I execution. That, that will, those dates will all be changed as when they're ratified. I just want to be clear that when she brings the point up that <laughs> yes, no. You know, I mean, I want her to be clear. I want all the board to be clear that before we move to the next one, we're clear or not clear. Because in my opinion, they, everything needs to be clear and, and okay, according to each director, to move forward. Otherwise, it's a no-go. I mean, I just want, so if if you haven't, if, are you clear as with the I'm answers? I'm sure we got an answer as of today, which we should have had an answer yeah. months ago. Yeah. And that's kind of this, like I said before, I'm sad that that union who is... I'm not talking personal, uh, but that they're coming up with the reasoning for putting a date on here that makes things ambigu ambiguous, <laughs> that they're holding so tight, because that's what we're hearing, they're holding so tight to making this contract look a little convoluted, like we did it when it was coming off the other end, where they're going to basically, uh, what we have been told is, they're not going to ratify if we have a July to July, even if we give them the April date. Mm -hmm. Then we got the information late. Then they're not, both unions aren't coming in in parallel. We're juggling and burdens on us now to try to That's force different. something, force something. So, okay. Um, Director Thornburg. Well, two of the things she brought up, are, I'm also concerned, but the issue with the bereavement is that before the bereavement had to come out of the sick leave, now it doesn't? It does not. According to state law, it does not. Okay, that, that was, yeah, that's the question. And, and as far as the- That's for anybody who's That's what employee. I wanna know. Yeah, it, just, it, it just, all of a sudden, when I looked at the red line, all of a sudden I noticed that sick leave was red line. And I went, well, what happened to this? Now, we already discussed it, like you said, from the three days to the five days, and that was the only part that was discussed not the fact that it didn't come out of sick leave. So now we got that clarified. Yeah, I'm not okay with the December 1st one anyway. And if that's the, the concern that the union has, we can dip that in the bud, but just simply asking Marty if he's done anything we should know about, and then that would take care of that. I have other issue that um, the, the $3,000, I, I don't feel that all the costs are listed on there. Uh, like the $3,000, uh, for the education or the college reimbursement, that's so, not listed on here. So I don't know how to. I I I, I thought about that, and yeah. I'm not sure how to quantify that mm -hmm. because not everybody is going to take advantage of that. No, they're so, not. So so there's that there, that's a very hard situation to quantify. 
Mm -hmm. So, so that was the, that was my my why I didn't include it into the costs. Well, you got five costs listed down here, and there was eight. Uh, there was eight uh, modules or whatever, eight eight things. Sure, but not every one of them was a cost module. Okay. All right. Those are all the ones that I identified as some sort of a cost component. Okay. Well, uh, I think I think I made my point about uh, it, it, it's not being funded properly and. Uh, and I'm not going to go for it. So I'm still, I, I just like to be clear on Director Seaman where she, she is on this. If these. You'll find out when we vote. Well, I want to make sure that it's aired out now. So we don't say if we, we didn't discuss that or they didn't clarify. I just want to make sure you got all your questions answered as best we think it could be handled. Okay. Okay. At this uh, moment, yes. Okay. Um, I have a question now. Um, when you mentioned the retroactivity, uh -huh. what exactly did you mean by that? And legally, if if the union would, they're not going to, let's say they don't have to sacrifice anything except time. Uh, right. What legally, what's the up and what's up and downside? Why? Why? I'm 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 your wingman, man. I, I get it. And I want to I want to support you. But at the same time, I want the district to move forward in the big picture. And I. We're trying to be as transparent as any board has ever been. And so I don't have a problem passing it because of that, because I know we got nothing to hide and we're doing all we can. And you're a pit bull, man, but I love you, man. And you're, I support you, but I want to know, can, can, what does he, what do you mean by retroactivity? And can the union accept that? And they're going to get everything they had coming to them. It's just a few more months till we pass the 280. The retroactivity exactly. is, retroactivity is certainly legal. If that's your question. It's a question of whether you can negotiate and get that agreed to. My, my my emphasis is it must go through a 218. Now, whether or not we'll get the 218 done by July 1st, that we don't know. Okay, probably not. However, that's why if it if say say for example if we don't get it done until the September. The, well, yeah, or January, January. or whenever. Right. Okay. You know, Anytime past July one, then say say we got it done in in September, October, whatever. Mm -hmm. We get that done, then everything, all the provisions will be retroactive. They'll get a heck of a check for the the pay that would have started on January one. The same thing for the all, all everything on there. The boot and pant allowance would be retro. The uh, standby pay would be retro. So if you got standby pay during that time, mm -hmm. then it would be, you'd get a big check to make up the difference. Mm -hmm. It would be retroactive. So they're not really losing anything. And it will have been done correctly. Mm -hmm. It will have been funded correctly. So that's that's the whole thing. Is I, It's just a matter of waiting a few months. I don't understand, uh, like I said, I don't see one, I haven't heard one legitimate reason why this has to be approved today. And we're not being transparent because we are not doing the process that we're supposed to be doing. We're not doing our job as far as the the uh, customer being everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So so if we if we do this, we're not doing our job. Mm -hmm. That's and the way I look at it. Thank you. And all these consternations we're going through, and it's it's. Uh... <laughs> Because we can make it legal, mm -hmm. but is it a matter of trust by the union that we're concerned about? I, I don't quite. Is it a matter of trust? <laughs> but our, our our obligation is to the ratepayer. But if we can make it legal and have it binding and have it retroactive, because we didn't get the information in parallel, and and we got it late with the unions, I'm seeing that we should. Get to have a little grace while we're trying to work through these things legally, transparently, and by the book, the PPC, uh, we, uh, FPPC. FPPC. We're trying to do things right, but because we're trying to, in good faith, show that we could be trusted, we're not. It's not because we don't want to, it's because we want to do it right globally. And if it's just a matter of what the union perceives that the board's trying to impede that, it, I just want to make it. For everyone, can we do that somehow? I don't think that's really an issue. Right, I, I right. think it's 
it's, I mean, it's, it's just a time thing. They're not going to lose anything. Yeah. And the other thing is that what we should be doing is we should be doing one and 39 at the same time. Agreed. That way you have a total cost for all of this. Mm -hmm. That way it all goes to 218. And we know as far as the argument that while well, we won't have a signed agreement, so we won't have an amount to put into the, mm -hmm. cost, the cost of service. Yes, we will. We know what it's going to be. It's like, come on. So it, it's just a matter of, yes, you know, wait a little bit longer, but if it takes longer, they're going to get they're going to get everything that they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The only thing that's the issue is that it should not be done now. It's not funded now. And the other benefit to doing one in 39 at the same time right now is that that will put one 39 yeah. and the 218 on the same five year schedule. It, it, yes. It, before the 8218, it was they have 39 and one. That everything is the same in the verbiage, or verbiage mm -hmm. and it's clear, and it's cool. we don't have to go through this. Another board won't ever have to go through this. What we're going through now, um, well, you, you're still going to have to go through it. But see, no, the, I mean, as far as this, what well, you did do for this union, this union, it's this, and you know, why is this union language isn't the same? Well, we're making it the same, so they can't. Well, can't, and, and that's another thing. That's, that's it. another reason for doing them both at that's the same I mean. time. Yeah. Is that they're all the employees. You know, they should be getting the same benefits, the same holidays, the same all this stuff. Yeah, that's okay. Right. And so, and knowing that, that, like I said, then you have the total cost for all your employees. So um, that's the way. And and yeah, doing it. Uh, the, the, the thing about having it on the same schedule as the two eighteen is that then you're going to have when you do it again, you're going to have more cost and all that sort of thing, which would be included in the next two eighteen and. And that way, it's all done above board, mm -hmm. okay, where the customers have the, the right to say, yeah, I'm okay with this, or no, I'm not. So that's that's the main, my main point is, is we're, we're supposed to be doing this, we're representatives of the customers. Mm -hmm. And so we're supposed to be, to me, this is circumventing their right have a say in it because it's a big chunk of money yeah, thank you but <laughs> at this point i i have one more question uh, in regard to, during the sausage making session nicholas could you add your ingredient as far as the uh the staff the district your plans the big picture as far as can you weigh in as the board has now and as legal counsel has can you weigh in as far as yeah, big picture uh, so they could help <laughs> any of us concerned to make the, the vote. Um, I all, mean, yeah. the I amount mean, of work that the outside oh, guys. You haven't had the big issue. Oh, did you? I didn't hear you see any hand raised. They, they spoke. They spoke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Okay. Uh, um, from my point of view, um, you know, the, the guys who work outside, they, they definitely go above and beyond for this district. Um, I, I, I agree that um, the 218 hasn't happened yet. It's happening now. I also, in my analysis, don't necessarily agree that that is something that is required. Um, there has been a, a number of projects that the guys outside have done that have ultimately saved this district, um, I would say millions, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Um, and I, I, there, there are things that we have coming up in the future that are, that are big projects that, that the guys will also be doing as, uh, labor and in-kind services for other projects, other grants, other things. So, you know, my, my analysis is, you know, I, I think having it linked to the 218 is, is ideal, approving it and having it continue to be linked and, and, and then having Local one also be tied to the 218 is advantageous for the district moving forward. Can I respond to that? No. Um, let's direct oh, the I'll see your hand. I'm a little, that, that made me a little angry uh, because it's sounding like that this board doesn't really give a brass ass about our, our employees, which we know they are going above and beyond. We have gone. You know, it should be very apparent that just about whatever they want, 
they're getting to improve their work, you know, areas. Uh, we're doing everything we can to to help them to do, to get the equipment and get everything they need because we know they they do the 110 percent. They're out there all the time. They're our front line with the customers. Why do we have such a good rapport with the customers now? Because we have employees that are out there giving us the good PR that that we are are so happy they're doing. Um, so I I don't like that what just happened here where it's making it sound like, oh yeah, they're doing this extra and they're saving us money. We know that and we appreciate everything they do. And we're not denying them this contract based on the funding or anything or the, the the money that they're asking for or the benefits. What we're trying to do is get this thing clean and clear so that it's good for all of us and not just, uh, and don't take this wrong because I was a hardcore union member with some baseball bat carrying ones. But anyway, you know, we need to have it clear and concise and working for all of us. And that's basically all we're doing is trying to clean this stuff up. Like I, I wasn't trying to impugn any of the board by what I said. I, I, if you took it that way, I, I, I yes, know I you did. guys. I know you guys know that they work hard. <laughs> I, I, my, my, my sentiment came from just giving the credit where credit is due, and 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 I would say that the board equally works as hard for the employees as the employees work for the board and for the district. So it's it's a it's a uh, a congenial relationship and. They they do a lot to save the district, and and I wasn't. I apologize if you took it that I was uh, offending you. I, 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 I it's I, not. It's the it's that crossover where it's like there's a line here, and, and I'm trying to make no line. I, I I am. I don't want there to be a line. I want it to be. I want to be the bridge between them and you, and I want it to be you know easily crossed. Yeah. Okay, Director Thornbill. Uh, Director Saunders will be next after you. I want to expand on this because I, I kind of took it the same way she did in what you were saying. I think the fact is that, like she said, they're getting what they wanted and we're happy to give it to them. And that's that's the whole thing is that all these things that they want, we we looked at it and we hem hot about this, that and the other thing. And and I think the fact that they're getting everything they wanted, we don't have an issue with that. And we understand these guys are doing an outstanding job. I mean, we get nothing but compliments, or at least I don't. I get nothing but compliments from people out and about when they've had somebody come. One of one of the guys come to their place, and and they're just really, really, really happy with. They're happy with the service in the office. I mean, uh, it, it, everything's going great. And I certainly don't want to see this create animosity between us and the staff or or any animosity between anybody. And uh, so I think the fact that, you know, maybe we don't say it enough, that we appreciate the work that they do and going above and beyond. But to me, the contract is saying it. We don't have an issue with the contract as far as all the things they're going to be getting. We just have an issue with the funding up for it. That's the, the issue. The timing yeah. of the funding. Like I said, I wasn't I wasn't trying to appear and okay. I apologize if it came across that way. I, I, I think you guys do a great job and you guys have given a lot of tools and a lot of resources to the guys outside. So please I, I if that came up. And right. I honestly believe if if the whole staff was here hearing this board and how passionate we are about protecting their best interests as well as our constituents and ratepayers out there. I tend to think they might cut us some slack if there's no downtime and everything's retroactive. That's the way I'm kind of leaning now. How about a little grace since we got put into this late in the game anyway to resolve these things? That said, Director Saunders. So um, the board has to do certain things that the public cannot. The board is the only one that can give the labor union a contract. That's why we have a labor negotiating committee. We, that's why we have closed sessions. A lot of the stuff we do is not open to the public. We don't just give the public, here's the contract. We give the public, here is what the numbers from the contract show. Here's all the salaries that's going to increase. Here's everything that's going to occur. 
they don't get to make the decisions that we get to make. So that's that's unfortunately the problem we have when we sit in these seats. As elected officials, yes, we serve the citizens, but we also serve the district, and that's one of our responsibilities. This just happens to be one of those times where it falls in with our rate salary survey. And remember, 218 only occurs if the rate's going to increase. We're all assuming it's going to increase because we know what happened with COVID, mosquito fire, inflation. So we can assume that that may be a situation, but it just happened to occur at the same time. But it really is on us to come out with this contract, regardless of whenever the 218 is. So that's all I have to say that Any my plan is to move forward with the contract. Uh, Director Stovall, any further follow-up before I go to Director Thornbrough? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Director Thornbrough. In response to that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you are absolutely correct, but that's not my point. Okay, my point is, yes, the public does have a say in it, and when they do, when we do the cost of service, and you have something as big as this out there that's above and beyond what would be normal, then that needs to be disclosed and the public needs to say, well, yeah, okay, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. What's our district budget? What's our district budget? Yes. I don't know at the top of my head. It's approximately $6.2 million. What's the impact of the salary increase? Well, just for 39, it's it's going to be 400,000. It's approximately 100,000 per year. So it's 100,000 per year, which isn't a significant based on our budget. And we're keeping within what we always talked about, the percentage of salaries to this infrastructure. This is 100,000 more than what the, the salaries and the, the cost for employees Yeah, now. we're way past 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're way past 2017. So, of course, mm -hmm. we're going to see an increase. It doesn't matter what happened in 2017. We oh, are no, now no, no, no. 2024. This, this is over 2023, not 2017. It only starts in 2024, so it's not a 2023 salary. These costs are increases to yes. 2023. Yes. Okay, so 2017 has got nothing to do with it. But you said it's a significant increase. It's 100000 per year, which is what we decided was 100000 over. Over the 2023. Over their previous salaries. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I, I'm done. Um, when I asked you about big picture, I mean, big picture, you stayed within the, you know, what, what I understand, you you know, the, the district's got, you've got, for well, the benefit of, the water district things in play that are being put on the back burner, costing the ratepayer ultimately a delayed benefit because we're stalled on this the last several months, which wasn't the board's fault. And no, so there's no fault. I, I, I think putting fault anywhere. Well, okay, but we we're we're dealing with it now because we've got dealt a bad hand and we're trying to make lemonade out of lemons. Sure. And so. If if it comes down to me making the <laughs> vote, I'm trying to figure it's a matter of trust. But if we could guarantee, I mean, I've been in the private sector my whole life. I wish I was in the union. Okay. But I have to put that aside now. And there was no guarantees. There were no guarantee, nothing. So if somebody would say, can you wait three months and we'll get you retroactive what we told you we were going to give you? I'd say, give it, bring it on. But I'm sorry. Um, I feel a lot of pressure now. Is I'll, I'll open it up to the Huh? Yeah, I'm going to open the public to take a little so break from us. And first, or pardon me? Or do in person? Yeah, per, in person gets priority. Go ahead, Mr. Dow. Yeah, Stephen Dow, I agree 100% with Mike Dow. He's, he's working for the people, the customers. He knows. He knows what's going on here. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Mike, for being there. And Donna, you did a great job, too. Thank you. And stick with Mike. <laughs> this Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? 
Uh, anyone else? Anyone? Uh, Cherie, you have the floor. <laughs> okay. My question is on this chart, it's on the um, staff report. There is no salary increase for the last two years. Why is that? Because that was what was negotiated that they would receive a three part salary increase in the last two years, no salary increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's the salary adjustment that are in the MOU? I'm not sure I understand what, the, what the you mean by the salary changes. Salary adjust can you use a different word than adjustment? I'm not sure I understand that word. Mm -hmm. Well, it says salary, it's where uh, water plant treatment operators get 4.67, but a canal operator yes. only gets half a percent increase, salary that adjustments is, or something? Yeah, it's equity okay. adjustments. It's, that is correct. Okay. So is the 4% COLA, potential 4% COLA in each one of these five years on this chart? That is correct. It is included? It is. Uh, on top of. It is included in 25 Six, 26, 27 as a 2.5% COLA in the middle. I can't guarantee it's going to be more or less than that. So my analysis was to take the number right down the middle at 2.5%. Okay, but we all know it's probably going to be closer to the four because of the inflation. So why isn't there any COLA in the last two years? Because COLA is not directly tied to the salary increases. Okay, then there should have been another uh, column include that should have been projected um, uh, colas because it doesn't appear that colas. we're getting the full picture. I, I, you can't project colas. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not going to put out false information. Okay, so this year's budget has about 3.6 million for um, salaries and benefits, and you're projecting 4 million, so that's 400,000. Uh, more for the next budget. So there's $400,000 there. And then I have a question on the random drug test. It states that all Class C uh, drivers are required to be under ra random drug tests. Does every employee who drives a uh, district uh, vehicle have a Class C license? Well, Class C is a regular driver's license, and if you but if you drive an okay. operate district vehicle, yeah, you can be random drug tested. Okay, and then why are there no job descriptions included in the MOU? The it, all the past ones had them. I that's I was working on it. I I will they were not attached. They, they, those haven't changed since the last one you received. Right. So will that be included whenever an MOU is approved? Yes. As a packet. Okay. And I think this is the cart before the horse. Um, yes. You really need to do this in conjunction with the 218. Thank you. That's three minutes. Thank you. Yeah, what you're saying. One more thing. Okay. We'll close, public close it for closing. public comment. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, do you guys, would you like to please? We made our statement three months ago. So we're done. We're good. Well, ready for your vote. Um, uh, Director Thorne, I'll close it for public comment. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, there is one thing that needs to be needs to be in here in writing. Some of the guy brought it up with Nick, as far as the the way that the uh, annual raises are applied. Uh, if it is compound, like you and I discussed, it's going to end up with more a higher percentage than what we agreed to. So it needs to be. The, each of these percentages for each year, it needs to be based on attachment A of the salaries there because that's what the board agreed to. That would equal the percentage that we agreed to. If you do it compound where every every year you're doing this amount based on like last year's raise, that's going to increase the percentage that, that, uh, that it was <clears throat> that we agreed to. So that needs to be that needs to be figured out. Or stated somehow. That's it. Thank you. Um, that being said, and we could put it proactively or retroactively in the contract that the union would get everything coming to them. 
I'm just going to tell you if you add retroactive at any point with interest, just let no, 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 let me, let me just lost. Say, hang on a second. Let me just say a statement. All right. Any change to what you see in front of you mm -hmm. will, you will vote this down and we will have to go back to the, back to the bargaining table. Okay, so, what, what's the downs? What's the worst downside if we voted down? I think we've, we've discussed that in close. Yeah, I just thought that. Mm -hmm. And you can always send it back to closed session. Which, if we voted down, that's probably what it would be. Would be what was happening. So oh, today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, this time, if there's no other board comment, uh, I think we ought to bring it up for a vote. Somebody's going to make a motion. Some I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the contract with Local 39, as stated. Second. Director Thornborough. You don't no. ask that. No, call the question. Oh, call the question. What's that? Call, call the, the question. question. Oh, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Well, you missed your eye opportunity. I know. You're thinking. abstaining. <laughs> huh? You got you to make a ruling. I know. No, I'm struggling. It's not an abstention. You got to make a decision. I, I, I can't. You can't abstain after your two two. You got to make a decision. What's the, what's the, how long is it going to take to get the uh, six months, particularly the 218? It's, it's, I, I can't put a number on that. Huh? It, it's, it's probably going to be six months. I can't. I'm just going to call for an order. You got to make a vote. Can't ask questions. No discussion. Mm -hmm. Make your vote and move on. I'm going to vote no. Okay. Um, motion um, doesn't pass three to two. Want to take a quick recess? Um, yes, I'd like to call for recess at five sixteen p.m. There's another moment, madam. want to just. It's, it's the last one is going to be super quick, I think. Okay. Um, Hang on, I've got to get my back in the game here. Um, adoption. Oh, well, that's the me one. Consider nomination of President McDonald to the California Water Insurance Fund Board of Directors. Uh, so, this is um, a bit of a process. Um, uh, Director McDonald uh, expressed interest in being nominated to the California Water Insurance Fund Board. Um, I, he would be a great candidate for this. This is a, uh, you know, an investment kind of fund. He has a great background in investments, and um, I think that he would be a great asset to the board. I'm still waiting. He does require um, three other boards to to. Also, put in resolutions. I'm still waiting for a few of the uh, two of those to come in. So I'm uh, hoping to have him be put in, um, and then the vote for this will become in May at the JPIA conference, May sixth. Good question. Uh, Director Thornburg. Uh, explain the three other boards. So to, to be on this board, you have to receive a recommendation from three other uh, interested parties within the JPIA fund to be considered as a nominee. Oh, okay. So, so other water boards or agencies, well. Oh, okay. All right. 
you can't just um so is this the cart before the horse um well we need this and the deadline is approaching so um if we don't receive the other ones this will the nomination will just fall any other board comment questions we did have to be a jpia member which uh the record of Donald was a JPI or JPI representative. So I would think he's attended all the meetings since he's uh, been there. He's knowledgeable of the investment fund and the core fund. And this is what determines all of our insurance costs, our property liability, all of that comes in with the money that we put in. And this is what is funding for our JPIA and with the other member on the NJPIA, there are 462 members within our district. The director is the alternate. Okay. 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 Any other board member comment? Open public comment, Director uh, Mr. Dell. No? <laughs> I'll open and close it for public comment. May I have a motion to accept? Or oppose. I move to approve the nomination to uh, the, the California Water Insurance Fund of uh, Director McDonald. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes by. I didn't hear Mr. Christine. Oh, she didn't vote no, so I should understand. So I'm just saying yes. Yeah, just try to make all your votes audible to the chair. Okay. And we may need to consider going to a roll call vote from here after. Because I don't think the votes fully at the same time as working. Pardon me? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Can't we have a button? We give you that. Motion passes four <laughs> with flag. one uh, abstention. Uh, for President yeah. McDonald yeah. to be on uh, a delegate candidate yeah. for the CWI. Just, just, just to clarify for record, I believe she did say yes. So it's five to zero. Oh, five yeah, to yeah. five zero. Okay, five, clear, five to zero to be on the uh, CIF nominated for the board. Thank you. And now I'm gonna. We can do it during the closed session. If you guys want to take a quick break, yeah, yeah. Any public comment? Any public comment? Any public comment? Oh, any public comment? I'm just the hands up. But okay, I was aware. Um, it's see, now five twenty p.m. See no public comment. See closed public comment. Wait a now I'd like to. Do you have a comment, Ms. Shree? No, you go ahead, Shree. You have the floor. We still see no. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Sheree, can you hear us? Did you want to give comment? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just want to make a comment on um, item number three. And um, after Steve Pro's comments uh, last meeting, I went back and looked at his settlement. And second part of the settlement says the district shall initiate a new rate study in 2021 in compliance with Prop 218, in case nobody knows that. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I want to congratulate Mitch for the uh, appointment. And uh, this is one of the better board meetings I've ever been to. Thank you guys. You're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. The public approves. Okay. It's 5.22 p.m. closed for public uh, closed session.
together. You are live. You are live. Okay. It's 6 27 p.m. coming out of closed session with nothing to report out. <clears throat> At this time, I'd ask any board member for requests for additions of future agendas. Mr. Uh, 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 Vice President Seaman, please go ahead. Vice President yes. Seaman. Yes, here you go. <clears throat> Um, Bennett gave us a report a few months ago dealing with the INI for the CDS, and it was a recommendation that we do something over nothing to remove, you know, reduce that INI. Um, can we have that looked at again in a report of, of what we're going to do, a proposal for what we're going to do, the numbers of what that CDS is pumping? So you see that during certain periods of the year, we're getting these high flows up into that into that leach field, and um, you know other times we're not. So showing the inflow is causing us some problems. Yeah, I can we can do that. I think that this mm -hmm. repair that they presented today actually will cause a lot less of the issues that we've been seeing in the That's past. Why it triggered me to yeah, think yeah. about this. Um, and and then I know that we're still so we are. And part of the CIP is to include the upgrade. It's about $800,000. Well, I'm not so looking at an upgrade. I'm looking for what, you know, because there should be some public outreach and sure and, and information yeah. out to the public that they're costing more money with this electrical cost to pump that extra yeah. high flows. We've got a spill, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'd say we do, we do reach out to the customers. We do have you know, kind of education with customers. Um, we can continue to do that, but we can also look at what the potentiality for, you know, um, the, the the cheaper cost fix, that's kind of the short term, and then there's the longer term cost fix that we are also uh, pursuing grants for. Any other director request? Nope. Um, Nicholas, is there any way uh, possible that you could put in hyperdrive the 218 and get it? Done in four months instead of maybe six. Um, you know, I'm just asking. I would say I can do the best that I can. Okay. And we have uh, we gave Mr. Guar the go ahead today to start. So we have a meeting planned for next week to do uh, uh, information gathering, um, and we plan to have the next board meeting for you all to ask questions and voice concerns about what you all wish to see in the 218 and mm -hmm. i think we move forward from there okay and your best is all we could ask okay well right now yeah. 110 percent. you can take it up a notch yeah okay. i will all right what input can we do the 218 i thought the whole thing is an external well i think that there's oh yes yeah, but there are direction. concerns that were raised from the last 218 and so I want to make sure that all of the board members' concerns of what projects are, you know, important, what pieces are important, are included in the uh, in the two eighteen process. So so that so that all potential past and future concerns can be addressed. Okay. okay the next meeting date will be May second at two p.m. And at this time, I would like to seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Most passion unanimously, none opposed. Uh, it's now 6.31 p.m. And we're adjourned. Next